tier... No, not tier one. Uh, Karma, did I make you poison notes? I did. Yes, uh, you did. What did you, small centipede? Is that what I gave you? Yep, small centipede. Alright, edit. And I gave... Uh, I crafted two of them, and I gave one of them to our so buddy Riven. Riven here. You have yeah, one actually of those. just looked up the stats. No, it's, no, it's different. So it's, it's, oh, different. it's different. Yeah. It's different for you guys, so there we go. Um, Alright, so... Frame us up here, get us kind of squared away, and get to make sure I am looking at the right Is it people. an action to apply poison? Um. Uh, I'm asking the DM, not our druid. <laughs> Truth. Um, it, it would depend on what you're. It would depend on what you are applying it to, I'll say. Um, so, like, if you're trying to apply it, like, if you're just doing, like, a quick dip of a dagger into it and then pulling it out, that's one thing. If you're doing it, um, to a, uh, like, if you're applying, like, if you're just, like, applying it to, like, the tip of your spear or something, um, you could, like, you could, like, probably take a, probably take about, yeah, you could probably do it, probably do it in a bonus action if you decide to crack the vial and just, like, just splatter it over the blade. Um, yeah. if you want to. Just curious. Trying to find my character sheets here, so give me a second. We set from there. Here we are. All right. So, hi, everyone here. Everyone kosher. Yes. Anyone terrified? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, uh, we just lost. Sick. We lost Tyrion. So, we'll give him a second to get back here. He's back. As he's soon back. as you said the word terrified, my call dropped out, so I feel That's like awesome. maybe my phone is terrified. It's very possible. I wasn't right. even on the Skype screen. That's weird, man. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, so uh, what happened last week? Uh, last week, our, the intrepid adventuring group known as Ordos Custodes, Ordos Custodes, Ordo Custodes, they sound like, I don't know. Anyways, hi. Um, what they do? Uh, they continue to dive deeper and deeper into this uh, this found um, appearing to be underground complex of some form that had magical traps uh, and magical areas uh, around and in it. Um, they, after having found one room that was completely. Uh, where all the walls, except for the floor, were covered completely in nothing but human flesh stitched together. And getting past that, they found um, another room that uh, followed, a, followed a long hallway that uh, ended up having many and many spinning chains um, going around it. Um, then through some impressive feats of dexterity and, you know, being badass motherfuckers, um, being able to dodge awesomely, uh, they were able to get through that as well. The gnome sorceress... Um, uh, Clarissa taking some pretty heavy damage. Um, after pr moving past that, they heard a voice uh, continuing to invite uh, a, a malevolent and hard voice continuing to edge them to come in, come closer, come deeper into his home um, and find him, for he had taken something very precious to one of our adventurers. Um, they continued to follow a room into a room that was complete darkness that no one could see in unless casting a very, very high light level spell. Um, the group found, uh, continued around, uh, continued into this room and found a large uh, summoning circle um, from, uh, thanks to their, uh, thanks to their gnome or their arcane gnome caster, identifying it as a very, very large, like larger than any they've seen or encountered before summoning circles um, and they also managed to find a small bedroom off to the uh, off one of the off in a side chamber um, where they found a interesting magical item um, that uh, uh, that they were able to that they were able to find uh, continuing on out out of that side chamber they eventually continued down a very very long flight of stairs ultimately ending um, in a room filled with different torture elements, an individual hanging from the ceiling uh, with chains, uh, chain hooks jutting out through his torso and out his shoulders and um, 
throughout uh, uh, different parts of his uh, up, his upper torso. Uh, the group lowered him down to the ground um, and tended to heal him as best they could, um, it not being enough um, to heal him. They gave some information on the entity that they, at this point, had become hunt became hunting, uh, finding out his name was Roxarian, um, that he had been bringing other entities and other individuals um, uh, th uh, this way, and that uh, he was not that this per individual was not the first to be tortured. Um, uh, and found out a few other found a few other interesting um, things uh, from this individual before the individual um, ended up expiring. Um, as as they looked around and took a short rest uh, in the short rest in in this in this torture room, uh, tier, um a mural found upon the wall uh, paintings done in blood of uh, many individuals' faces, all smiling and some laughing um, with a very gleeful expression upon their face. Um, most of the individuals, most of our group, um, utterly repulsed by this, uh, turned and left and continued on. They continued down a very another long staircase that eventually flattened out. Um, and found a large, found two large double doors uh, made of metal and wood um, that they burst and pushed open um, to find a very dark room with pillars that lined the entire length of it. Um, e almost every surface and every place coated in chains. Uh, a, lo a laughing voice coming out uh, once again, continuing to usher, uh, usher and invite cha insight challenges against our adventuring group. Um, Tyrion, our elven paladin, ra raced forward upon seeing uh, the individual and entity uh, of the individual of Xiao um, uh, laying on the ground uh, in a beam of light. Uh, he rushed forward, the rest of the group darting off to different corners of it um, uh, as the entity was nowhere to be seen. The door slamming behind them. Um, battle ensued. Uh, different traps were sprung. Um, Tyrion eventually reaching Xiao and making sure that she was okay, seeing slight, a slight bit of blood dribbling out of her mouth, um, seemingly unconscious, but alive. Um, fights uh, The fight continued as the rest of the group began attacking and attacking and attacking more and more and more. Um, and it is here that we pick up this evening. A uh, quick admin question, yes. Nathan. Since you played me last week, where am I for spell slots? Uh, you used haste, and you 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 used one level two spell, and you used one level three spell. Got it. Thank you. I think you used haste. Quick in a uh, ball. request, Nathan. Yes. Um, on the stream, if you could just move the roll twenty screen down, the character portraits on the other side are down uh, or over? blocked off. Just a little bit down. It's just blocking the faces. It's hardly an important thing. Just an aesthetic thing. I still have to figure out exactly. Yeah. No worries. Um, we'll get there. That'll work. Okay, cool. And I can move myself over. I can be underneath you guys. Let's try this. Let's try this tonight. See what I like. Phrasing? How did you do that? Let's try that. Cool. What is this witchcraft? I don't know. Okay. So, kicking off tonight, uh, a mural is starting up. Mural, it is your turn. Mural, are you meeting? I've been, yep. I've been planning this all week. Okay. I'm going to cast Blight on him. Ooh. All right. Target takes 88 damage on a failed save, and it's a constitution saving throw of 15 DC. All right, what's the spell, Hazy? What's the save, Pardon? DC? 
What's the spell? What's the save? Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, con. It's a natural seventeen. Okay, so he takes half damage. Twenty-one total. Thirteen. Sixteen. Twenty. Five. Thirty-one. Thirty-four. Forty. So twenty points of necrotic damage. All right. And that's half the ready for you, so. Right. All right. So twenty. Cool. So as you, as as you, as you're standing. Um... Okay. So as you're as you're standing there, as you're standing there, his chains whipping back, forth, to and fro. Uh, you you manage to ju- you manage to just see an opening as you. As you as you take as you take your as you take your hand, you feel the you feel you see green energy encase your hands, and all of a sudden you coalesce it into a single single beam of light. It goes flying forward, it slams into uh, slams into his upper shoulder. Uh, he uh, he, lo- he he his hand and arm drops just slightly. Uh, he looks down. He looks down at his hand, and you can see as uh, some of the chains on his shoulder and his arm begin to slowly kind of turn to dust and start to um, almost seem weathered and rusted and cracked a little bit. Um, good, good. Thank you. All right. Is that it? That and uh, yeah, that's probably all it's going to be for right now. All right. All right. This brings us to. Alright. So, uh. Tyrion. Just out of luck. Yep. Tyrion. Karma. Riven. And Salix. And Clarissa, by extension of Tyrion at the moment, since you're in, in his backpack. Um, right. All of you. All of you feel chains. Wrap. Uh, once again. Spring to life and wrap around your and uh, wrap around your and wrap around your legs as you are currently just uh, just uh, too close and just in within range of all of them. All of you are once again considered grappled. Um, I I once again. And a mural is just out of range of the grapple. Just so out of the objects on the floor. Yeah. They can extend one uh, one square beyond where they're on, on, yeah. the, on their position. Yeah, yeah. Got so it. Can. Okay. So heads up on that. Good to know. Okay. Um, all right. This brings us to Roxarian's turn. He he is uh, not particularly happy with this. So especially with that last thing, he's going to. Um, Attempt to grapple you, uh, Emiral. So he's gonna chuck okay. his. Um, yeah, don't know how grapple works. I think it's a, I think it's a deck save. I think is what it is. Let's double check, just so I'm not, you know, fucking this up. Um, attack, cast a spell, dash, disengage, hide, search, make attack. Grappling. Um, yeah, you make a, uh, okay, yeah, you make a, uh, make a, uh, athletic, make an athletics check. Athletics? I rolled a 17 plus 3. Alright, so he rolls a natural 18 plus 4. Alright, so it's 22. So, you are also... Con- so, he... Uh, so, as you're... As you are, sta- as you are standing there, his cha- he takes one of his chains, twirls it around, f- flings it at you. You man, you try to dodge out of the way, but the chain just is too fast. It wraps... It goes once, twice around you before pulling... Before he pulls tight, and you feel him... Uh, you feel that you are now connected... Uh, uh, connected um, via the chain to him. He's holding you taut right there. Um, you see his leg. You see his legs tense as he crouches down and jumps, 
super high up in the air, you following along with him. Um, as he does, he's taking his arms and actually swinging you uh, through the air and throwing and attempting to throw you down into the lava. Um, oh, great. So he's not going to... That's a nine. That's not going to do it. So as he... As he leaps up into the air, you go, you go, you go flying forward. The chain releases you, flinging you down towards the lava. Um, you, um, you, as you go, as you go tumbling, you slam into the ground and you take, um, you take two points of bludgeoning damage as your back, as your bar, as your back hits the ground and you bounce, falling backward into the actually into the pit. You're hand reaches out gra trying to grasp for anything your hand finds the ledge and you're now hanging there just above the lava pit you can feel the heat rising um uh rising up towards you you manage to have one hand there you pull your other hand up and grasp onto it but you're still hanging there currently he has currently disappeared into the top area again hey nathan can do i see that do i see all this happen Yes, you do. Can I try to react to it? Like uh, your uh, reaction, your reaction. Yeah, go ahead for your reaction. All right. So what I want to do is when I see him go to throw her down, like when mm -hmm. I see like that she's falling through the air, I want to try to cast levitate on her. Okay. Um. I I mean I'm grappled, so I don't right. know how. Right. I must just make sure. I want to see what levitate requires real quick. Uh, VSM. Um, I'll say yeah. You can, uh, um, I'll say go ahead and make a concentration check. So go ahead and roll okay. 20 and add your uh, wisdom yeah. with that. Yeah, that works for me. Okay, ooh, the nine. <laughs> as you see, as you see a mural's body, you get released from the chains and um, and go falling down and go falling down towards the ground. You see it bounce, and you're trying to conjure the words and think of the words you just kind of spew an utter sense of nonsense out and. You think your meaning gets gets mentioned enough that it slows her fall just enough for her to grab onto the edge of the edge of the lip, um, but uh, it's not enough to stop her from taking damage, though. Unfortunately, I tried. <laughs> All right, wonderful. And since we're in combat, I need you to roll a d100, please. Yay! Um, awesome. awesome. It's not like you're on top of me or anything. N nothing <laughs> bad could happen. Yeah. 91. 91. All right. Um, I did. All right. So, come on. There you go. 91. Um, all right. Um, Clarissa, give me a number from one to uh, give me a number from one to uh, let's see here actually don't do that uh, do you, do you. give me a number between 17 and 41. 27. 27. All right. Sweet. Roll a d4. Okay. What? What'd you get? Two. A2. Fun. This will be interesting. Oh boy! And we're all done. Oh no, it'll be pretty fun. <laughs> you'll you'll enjoy this. You'll enjoy. This. I'll enjoy it. I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> you'll, you'll enjoy this. 
especially since I have no idea what's happening because I'm staying in character and not looking this stuff up. <laughs> it's pretty solid that you're not doing that. Okay, so, um, and besides, even if you were, it wouldn't really matter. <laughs> okay, so, um, as so as you are casting levitate, you feel this bubbling surge of magical energy coming up th into you and through you, and you're. One hand, and your wand just happens to be laying on the back of Tyrion's neck at this point. Um, Tyrion, you feel this strange surge of energy flow through you um, as you all of a sudden feel your arm. As all of a sudden you feel your arms and your uh, your arms and your legs congeal together and almost kind of form into your body. You feel your neck elongate and your your face push forward into an elongated snout. You feel scales rippling up your entire uh, your entire uh, your entire face and down your entire body. You look down and you realize that you can't actually smell anything. You feel your tongue flicker out into the air as uh, as a forked tongue comes out of your mouth. You are now currently been polymorphed into a giant poisonous snake. with a gnome on your back. This effectively reducing and breaking the grapple on both of them. I meant to do that. Uh, right. I don't know if you heard any of that, but we're hopefully... <laughs> uh, Tyrion, alright, cool. You now have control over it. Your health is... Where's your health at? I'm speaking parcel tongue. Don't, don't worry about it. I got you. I'm oh, sorry, I was talking though. I didn't realize that was on. Unmuted. It's okay. And 14. Cool. Alright, Tyrion, you have control over it. You are currently. You and Orc Clarissa are currently grappled anymore, which is good. Um, but you are now. But a, I'm a snake. But you are now a giant snake with a gnome currently riding atop your back. So. Not the worst. To anyone in chat who has uh, artistic ability, please, please draw that. Somebody, please. <laughs> 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 For the love of God. All right. Okay. So, all right. So, Roxanne has moved up into the has moved up into the room, and he is going to drop down back here. Um, Karma, you feel a loud thud. Uh, happen as you, as you look behind you, uh, Roxarian comes down with an overarching blow towards you. Um, shit, it's gonna be a. That's gonna be eleven to hit. That's not gonna hit. I miss this. All right, so you with the. Oh wait, you're grappled. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I get the defense. Grapple just speed becomes zero. And can't benefit from bonus movement. Effect ends yep. ends when forced away. I was just checking to see if I get advantage on it. I don't get advantage on it. It's fine. Uh, okay, so as he as he comes down, you manage to just move just your move your like uh, kind of like in, not really move or dart, but you you kind of just kind of tend to fall over, <laughs> clattering onto the ground as the chain head <laughs> comes slamming into the ground with an explosion of rocks. You have to kind of cover your face to keep the rocks from hitting your eyes, but you are you man you manage to. You've managed to be okay right there. All right, this brings us to God. I know you guys are done for tonight. Uh, this brings us to uh, Karma, actually. Okay, so uh, well, I guess attempt to break the grapple would be first. Um, is that strength, Dex, or option? It is strength. Okay, it's a strength check. Uh, Ten. Uh, unfortunately, I believe that does not succeed. Nope. Um, as you, as you, as you, as you, re as you reach down and try to pull up, uh, try to pull off the chains, you look up at Roxarian and you just see his eyes just glint malevolently at this point, um, at you, and you start frantically fidgeting with the chains, and nothing's really giving, unfortunately. All right. Um... So what what was that? Was that my bonus? Was that my action? What That's was your that? Action. That would have been your action. All right. So bonus action, um, I will go and uh, dodge. Okay. 
Man, so as you're can... as you're currently on, as you're currently trying to fiddle with the chains, you look up and just kind of all right. You prepare yourself. You kind of place yourself, still trying to fiddle with the chains a little bit, but more making sure you're aware of your enemy and getting ready to um, dodge and get out of the way as soon as quickly, as soon as he attacks. Clarissa, you're currently atop a giant snake. <laughs> uh, phrasing. Um. <laughs> All right, well so played. I can I can see the dude thing, right? He's like right here. Yes, you can. All right, so I'm just gonna look down at the snake and be confused, <laughs> and then just kind of shrug and say, uh, "Taryn, if you can hear me, I meant to do that." Uh, and then I'm gonna cast Firebolt at the dude guy. Go for it. All right, so do, 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 yeah. okay, so an unnatural twenty, nice to hit, and then that'll hit. Okay, and it's been so long since I've used this. Yeah, two d ten damage. Yeah, all right. Okay, ten points of fire damage. All right. As you take, as you take your hands and you, as you take, as you take your hand and you uh, coalesce, uh, take, and at the tip of your wand, a small bead of red light uh, coalesces at it. You flick it directly at the enti at the uh, large entity of Roxarian uh, staring there. The bead goes flying forward. It hits him in the chest. He stands there, looks down at his chest, looks back up at you, and just laughs. It well, that's not very to, nice. It seemed to have... Uh, you see where the impact hit. You see his skin. Uh, uh, you see you see his bare chest of skin. Uh, you can see where it hit, but his skin seems to take, that da take the damage and the energy that hit there and seems to almost kind of pulse in his chest as his muscles grow tense and you see his arms where um, Amiral hit him with the blight spell seem to almost kind of starts to stitch himself back starts to stitch itself back together not working as intended right uh unfortunately no that is it all right brings us back to brings us to salix you're up buddy Bueller. okay <clears throat> uh do i get to try to escape the grapple now or at the end of my turn now now it would okay. be your action if you would like to. It's your action to do so? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to stay in grapple. And, um, and for my action, <clears throat> I'm going to cast a uh, guide bolt. Go for it. Uh, which level is it? First level. No, let's do it at. Yeah, let's do it at first level. That's a 12 plus a 6 is an 18 to hit. Uh, 18 will miss. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. As you, okay. as you, as you focus on your holy symbol and, uh, take, and you take, uh, judgment and you slam it on the ground, as a wave of uh, radiant energy goes rippling out from it on along the ground all the way up towards him, uh, it seems to just kind of just dart off to both sides of him and slams into the walls behind him. Um, um, okay. Go ahead and make it just a general attack, real quick. <clears throat> uh, just like with my strength? Uh, yeah, just with your strength. Okay. Um, 16. Plus five, twenty-one. Okay. So as you as you took judgment and swung it down inadvertently, you actually did you slammed into the chain you slammed into the chains that were binding your feet. The chains around your ankles fall loose and crawl out to the ground. Oh, well that's handy. No longer grappled. Okay. Um for a bonus action. Linky's gonna float back over this general area. Okay. And try to smack him in the face. Okay. Uh, he'd have to move one more space to get there. Is he not occupying this whole? You can get it. You got to get it right up there. Okay, I was just confused to... about what area Roxarian is occupying. He's occupying like melee. Is he a large creature? 
he is a large creature. So if you so for melee, you got for melee, you'll have to be right there. Um, I, I change I, for for Blinky. I change it up as as we go with uh, more melee characters because um, having everybody right on top of each other would get really confusing. Um, but okay, well, that's right still within my distance, but it has to be it has to be here. Well, what's the distance uh, for Blinky? Twenty feet. Okay, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Melee spell attack. That's a natural one. <laughs> oh god. Please. <laughs> Please. Um, so, <laughs> Salix, as you command, as you, uh, taken a little back from uh, the lack of the guiding bolt not working, uh, you command Blinky, you command Blinky to attack Roxarian. It blinks out of existence, and you th uh, stand there for a second, uh, really confused, before it reappears right behind Karma. Uh, Karma, I need you to make a... Uh, actually, no, it doesn't matter that way. Um, so as it goes, as it goes swinging toward, as it goes swinging towards the entity in front of it, uh, Karma, you managed to just catch your catch your eyes, catch it out just out of the corner of your eyes. You managed to duck underneath it as it goes swinging directly above your head, uh, and it goes back to its original spot. Man, I'm out of what the What's fuck, Salix? Sorry, it's an accident. Keep fighting. Okay, okay. Top of the round, Riven. All right, um, I am gonna use my hasted action to try to break my grapple. Go for it. Eleven. Um. Unfortunately, as you, as you, as you attempt, as you attempt to pry your pry your arms out from your the side of your body where the chains are wrapping around you, just can't quite get out of it. Ugh. Uh, I'm gonna use my action action to okay. huck two daggers at him. All right, go for it. Two attacks. <laughs> Ooh, first one's a natural 20. Nice. There you go. All right, that's going to be D6 plus, I think it's four. Yeah. Yeah. 14 points on the first one. Yay. That's doubled. Yeah, uh, it's a five. Roll to five. That's 10 plus four, four for so 14 dex. Okay. okay. Nice. 15, 16, 17. 22. 22 will hit. 25 feet. He's fine. Uh, 7 points of damage. 7 points of damage, right? I think it's 25 feet, yeah. I think it's within range. And then I'm gonna. Uh. How how much space can I back up around this thing while being grappled? Uh, you're pretty can I like much move at, it all? Or? You could pretty much move like around. Like you could. Be, uh, your speed is reduced to zero with the grapple. So. Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm not burning a guy point. Yeah. I'll allow it for now. Right now. So, okay. What? I'll allow it for now. All right, uh, a mural, you're up. Currently hanging on the edge of a uh, lava pit. I'm gonna try to make my way up, back onto the ground. Athletics check, please. Uh, 17. All right. I'm just grabbing random d20s and tossing them in. So. You uh, you managed to you managed to pull yourself up. Uh, uh, uh. And you look up, and directly in front of your face is this giant snake, the tongue slithering out. Um, you stand up, you manage to stand up, and you look around and you find, see Roxarian, where, where he's standing at. Uh, he seems a little busy with the with um, two daggers being currently chucked at him, and uh, the, uh, your other allies harrowing him from different spots, but you're okay. So, what else are you doing? Is that it? Uh, is that all I'll I can say do this turn? I'll say or? that's about half your. I'll say that's probably about half your movement to get up there. Just 
35. So I have 35 feet of movement, so halved would be 17. Yeah. So... I'd you can probably here. get about three spaces. Okay, I'm going to move beside Karma here. Okay. Turn, and can I attack, or is that my thing? Um, if you're doing a ranged attack, you could probably do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ice knife him. Go At this it. range, I won't hit me, so... Uh, it's going to be at a third level. Uh, 20 to hit. 20 will hit. Third level ice knife. Let's pull it up here. Ice knife, it's D10 of piercing right away. Which is going to be 9 points of piercing damage. And... 4d6 cold from a dex save... Uh, how much? How much piercing you said? Uh, nine. Okay. Um, deck save of fifteen. For fifteen. That's one. So he takes full damage. That's twelve and seventeen points of cold damage. Seventeen points of cold damage. Cool. All right. So as you as you once again crystalline and crystallize and form the ice knife it forms uh you grasp uh it forms directly and it forms directly in front of you hovering there you grasp the knife you grasp the knife by your hands you take it and take it and chuck it directly at him uh this time at this point it goes it goes end over end slamming into his upper thigh um he looks down at it he looks down at it laughs for a second and at, before he can be reached down and crush it it explodes covering his upper thigh and his upper knee in uh, completely encased in ice Urgh! he looks down at, he looks down at it trying to move it he trying to move it it seems to be moving a little bit but not quite to the full extent that he's used to hmm. right. and uh, I am just going to basically sit there and wait uh, right. <laughs> well not literally sit but like stand there and wait Alright, so uh unfortunate alright, so that's gonna make that's going to it's God, my dice are playing like rolling like shit tonight. I think it's Tyrion's round. No, it is uh it's actually the room's turn next. Oh. Alright, so Salix, uh the chain once again in front of you springs to life and attempts to grapple you. Um I manages to go ab like this time you're expecting it you manage to just jump just out of the way it only manages to grab one of your legs you have a little bit more room to move at this time um but... uh these are going so, to it's an automatic grapple i don't get an opportunity to try to avoid it in the first place with the room yes it is an automatic grapple okay this is part of this fight got it yeah it's just part of the fight um it's not how every grapple goes like if you if you know if you notice whenever he tries to attempt to grapple it's an ac it's an athletics versus the um but uh, there's his, his three separate but, so. with, but well, no. When he attempts to grapple, like when Roxarian attempts oh, okay. to grapple, it's it's your guys' athletics versus his uh, um, his strength. Um, cool. Just checking. Thanks. For the room, it's more of for the room. It is a automatic. It's a quick automatic grapple. Um, with the fact of these things being, with the fact of the giant snake so large, and with the Clarissa currently standing on top of the giant snake's head, um, the chain. Uh, Tyrion, you feel the chains wrap. Try to attempt to wrap around, uh, wrap around your snake body. But as you do, you met you you uh, growing slow, slightly accustomed to your having grown slightly accustomed to your animal form. <sighs> Managed to just duck and weave and slither directly out of them, avoiding being able to avoid the grapple. Um, brings us to Roxarian's turn. Right. Um, he is going. To... <coughs> Take. Um, all right, so he is going to take one swing. All right, so he's going to take one swing against a mural, one swing against Karma, and a third swing against a mural. Yeah, right. and Karma's at disadvantage yeah, for Karma's dodge. At disadvantage, which is good because it's a natural nineteen. Eight, so sixteen to hit against Karma. 
does not hit. Okay, so as as he takes one as he takes one chain and slams it down, you man, you 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 <clears throat> expect this man to just roll out of the way, still attached to the chain, but managed to roll just out of the way. Uh, next attack, uh, thirteen to hit against a mural. That's gonna miss. Miss. And the other one is an eleven. It is gonna be a nineteen to hit. DC is 19. So just hits. So you take a grand total of uh, 16 points of slashing damage as the as the chain comes raking across your raking across your bo- raking across the uh, raking across your um, your upper body and your upper body as it just rips past your armor and uh, you reach your hand up to your chest. You feel some blood. You you look down at your hand and you see blood beginning to pool into it. You shake it off. Uh, squaring off, getting ready to square off against the U. Uh, that was two, that's all three attacks from him. Um, all right. Brings us to Tyrion, your turn. You well, first snake. question Can I try not to be a giant snake? You are currently a giant snake. I am currently a giant snake. Had to ask. So... Uh, Which is parcel uh, mouth for I'm going... How far can I go? You are technically a giant poisonous snake. Ooh, okay. Well, that's... Your speed is 30. An upgrade. 30 feet. Yeah. Word. So let me just do it quick. Once over here... All right, so giant poisonous snake. All right, I'm gonna move over. Uh, I assume taking Clarissa with me. Yep. To like here. I don't. Right on top of him. Here. <laughs> I mean the. Okay. Okay, I'm going to this that square. Okay. But I feel like yeah, kind of right square. on top of him because I what what I want to do is try and. Constrict. Const- Try and grapple him. Grapple him and like bite him in the neck. Okay. What? Um. Okay, Mike Tyson. I'll give you. I was going your- more for Orochimaru, <laughs> and Mike Tyson would bite feeling, him in the yeah. ear. Thank you very much. All right. So you're, that, that'll probably be your two attack actions Mike. then. Um. Go okay. Ahead yeah. Make- I don't know how snake form works, so I just Basically. figure I'm gonna slither around him and try and yeah. like. So if you're you gonna know, attempt two fangs right in the jugular. Yeah, so if you're going to attempt to grapple him, go for it. Go ahead and make your grapple first. Um, so that's uh, gonna be, that's gonna, you still keep all of your stats. It's just okay. you are now a giant snake. Um, oh, I keep, okay. So you keep all of your I stats just... except for the except for the speed. The speed changes a little bit, and your gotcha, and, gotcha. Your, like, and your hit points and your AC change. It's just that sure. they are like it's just that they are temporary. So like once your Hit points oh, your thank you for form. that metagame relief because I didn't know if I was temporary once, or if once I died your, um, a snake. I once died. your once your hit points as the snake go bye bye, um, you revert back to your form, um, but your AC and your hit points change. Well, I appreciate so. you letting me know that because I was working yeah. under the assumption that I was in like some sort of snake matrix, mm-hmm. um, where if I die as a snake. I'm saying oh, you keep died. your same stats, Amiral. And I'm loving it. it. Thank I'm you still going to do the same thing. Still going to do the same thing. Yep, go for it. So go ahead and make your grapple. So that's a d20, right? Just... D20 and add your strength, which is his acro. Uh, 21. So 8 from him. So as you dart, as you, as you, and, as you and Snake Farm slither and dart around him, <laughs> you wrap it, you, he... He tries to he tries to batter you with his uh, with his chains, but you manage to just shrug it off. You you get closer and closer and closer, and you eventually feel his see his arms ugh, get tightened directly up to him. <sighs> Go ahead and make your second attack for your attack. All right, uh, I would like to use a bonus action and serpent rage. <laughs> All right. I I looked it up. It's not in the book, but I think you get the general idea. I got you. So, attack already. Oh, yeah. Natural 20. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... So, the, so, the, so since you're since you're making a bite attack with him, it is mm-hmm. a... Uh, 
It says it's a natural 20. Um, so mm -hmm. it is... Uh, it is going to be 1d4 of piercing damage. Uh, then d4. 1d4. That was a 4. Yes, yes! Nice, so minus four. Okay, okay. Um, so as you, as as soon as you constrict him, your face just comes up. Your face just comes up, looks him directly in the eye, and you sw and even though you're in snake form, there is green. There's green energy that flares around your eyes as your eyes uh, dilate to the or whatever the opposite of dilating is uh, to the smallest slits possible. As there's just this green natural energy that flares around it, you open up your maw and you bite down on bite down, aiming for his face. Aiming for his face, he darts his head just out of the way, but his, you feel his, your fangs sink into his uh, upper sh upper right shoulder. <laughs> ah! He lets out a giant roar. Uh, as you do, you feel um, you feel the poison pulse from in your from inside your fangs as it pushes and pushes into his, into his body. Go ahead and roll three uh, d three d six. Um, what? Go ahead and roll three d six okay. for uh, poison damage. Oh, okay. I actually have precisely 3d6 in my dice collection, so... Uh, ooh. Okay, not bad. Nine. One, three, or one, two, and six. So, nine. Okay, so nine. <laughs> so, as you... As you, rele as you release the poison... Into into his body, you see you see his you see it. Um, uh, you can actually see the veins start to turn purple as the poison begins to enter his body. Um, uh, he he seems to kind of laugh at you, but he seems to kind of laugh at you before. <coughs> a f a fear a, a look of fear just comes directly across his face as he realizes that his his body is no longer reacting the way that it should. Anything else? Uh, can I do? I don't think... I'm not moving. I've grappled him. I've attacked him. Unless snakes have, like, awesome magical nope. bonus action uh, abilities, then much, nothing else. Much, okay, cool. Brings us to... Clarissa, you're up. No, Karma, 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 Karma. I lied. Karma. Karma. All right. Um... Actually, where I am, I'm not going to try and escape the grapple. I'm going to attack with uh, Valerian Legacy. Go for it. Okay. All right, that's a 19 on the die. Uh, that'll what's hit. my? Okay. That'll hit. If it's a natural 19, that'll hit. Uh, sneak on that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lots Don't stab here. the snake. <clears throat> All right. Uh, 10, 14, 17. You guys ready yet? Okay. 18 and 18 points of regular damage, then five nice. points of of fire damage. Nice. Um. So. And then five points of fire damage. You said. Yes. So, uh, and as you, as you, as you, as you, as you, as you're kind of kneeling, as you're kind of kneeling there with the chains wrapped around your, wrapped around your, uh, wrapped around your, um, wrapped around your legs, uh, you see that you see this giant snake wrap around him once, twice, three times, and go in and bite him. Uh, you seeing that, take your, uh, flip your, uh, snag it, Valyrian legacy out of the belt, flip it in the air, catch it, chuck it at him as hard as you can, seeing directly right in an opening right in between the snake and the, and where uh, his and where Roxarian's flesh would be. It goes flying. Whoosh, your aim's true. Poof, slams into him. Ugh. The pier the piercing slams into his, into his into the middle of his upper abdomen. You, oh, uh, you, you shouldn't have whoosh, as the as the dagger flares with fire. Ugh, a giant smile flares across his face as he just looks down and says, ah, thank you for the meal before the dagger psh, teleports back to your belt. Alright, uh, just FYI, Valerian Legacy is silvered. I don't know if that matters. Uh, uh, I, am, just I, am aware I am aware it is silvered. Okay. 
All right, and then uh, that's my action. Bonus action. I'm going to dodge again. Okay. So as you as you stand there, hands on your belt, ready to go, you assume get ready, get ready for him to possibly see what happens next. Clarissa, you're currently pretty damn close to this thing. Tiran's currently grappled, pretty much wrapped around it. You are currently on the back of Tiran. Uh, kind of got the, where the, the the head meets the rest of the body. What are you doing? All right, so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna look at it. Okay. And say, what are you afraid of? Thing, and then cast detect thoughts. Interesting. Okay. All right. Detect thoughts. All right. Um, <laughs> just making sure that we have this correct. One minute. Sorry, just chucking this, making sure I'm aware of exactly what happens here. All right, so you're just attempting to read the surface thoughts, I take it? <clears throat> uh, yeah. I probably wouldn't be able to go further. You, can, well you can. can't. You can with the spell if you choose to. Um, but right now, the uh, as you as you as you as you take as you take as you walk pretty much like directly onto. Um, Onto the snake's head, who is still currently biting uh, Roxarian. You walk, you kind of just like pr hands behind your back, wand currently in your hand. You just walk up to him and just look him directly squarely in the eye uh, as he get, as he finishes saying uh, over to Karma, "Thanks for the meal." And he just glances up into the small, tiny gnomish face. You take your wand, twirl in your fingers, and just say, "And what are you afraid of?" And place the wand directly onto the uh, into the middle of his forehead. A flash of images come rushing directly in, come directly, rushing into your conscience. Uh, plans, thoughts, uh, ideas. Uh, slight amount of panic um, as he, uh, as he is currently looking at his uh, situation and trying to figure out the best course of action to get away from it. Um, you, uh, he, you hear, you hear, a, you hear the, you hear him say, "Stupid gnomes. Corvus will not have fun with this." Will not be happy if I fail here. <sighs> Which way? Up, down. Gotta get rid of the snake first. What are you doing? Get out of my! Get out of my head! Pretty much what you get. Okay. Um, and then with that, I'm going to yell to everybody. Um, don't hit him with fire. And he's afraid of failure. What a baby! And then I'm gonna try to <laughs> surf down the snake to get on the ground. <laughs> So as you, I'm gonna regret this, but I'm gonna do it. Go for it and make if an. If there uh, is anything I can do, move, wriggle, make an, to uh, make this happen. Clarissa, I'm gonna go do ahead. It. Clarissa, go ahead and make um. Athletics, I guess. Yeah, make an athletics check. So much yes on that. Woo! No, this is, no, this is gonna be acrobatics. Make acrobatics. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's a twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Badass. Yes. <laughs> so. Clarissa, as you as you pull the wand away after seeing this full flood of images, you turn around, racing down the Surfing. snake as quick as, as quick as your little gnome legs will carry you, and you jump and jump just to gain a little bit more momentum, and you completely uh, complete surfer style, just with wand directly out in front of you, uh, hair pink hair flowing behind you, your robes f billowing behind you as well. You just. Whoo, whoo, Woo, slide down, slide down the snake um, in a direct spiral around Roxarian's entire body. Come and as the, as you come sliding off the tail, you just shh, just skid to a stop on the ground. Hair just kind of blowing in the wind, completely obscuring your eyes. The rest of you look over towards her, and you can just see just one eye peering out from beneath, peering out beneath the uh, beneath the hair with a very stern but steady and f steadfast look on her face. Her her eye look her eye looks over towards you and just glints maniacally, ready for the next round. Anything else? Mm, that's enough for one round, I think. Brings us to my my intention, by the way, was to slide like off the snake's tail to get like 
so I'm not right next to it. You're, I don't know where to uh, actually put myself. Uh, give me a second to grab you. You're going to be right here, basically. Okay, yeah, that works. You sl he's currently grappled. I don't want to like, have the snake directly on top of him, but... Right, I got gotcha. you. So, trying to get the snake as close as I can, so there we go. Okay. Sailor, All right, yeah. so the snake is currently wrapped around Roxardin. Wrapped around him right now, yes. Okay. I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on Roxarian, so he needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Um, and I believe Tyrion will as well. Okay, yeah, thank you, because you not for nothing, the snake has a name. Yeah. I don't know. I just saw a snake. <laughs> Where your elf friend used to be? Oh, we're going to have some words. Um, later, like, uh, Salix, make a... Uh, make a um... Make a concentration check while you're casting. Concentration this. check? Yeah. Uh, concentration. That's constitution, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be constitution. No, it's wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom? Yes. For concentration? Okay. Concentration. Uh, that's a 21. All right. Okay. Uh, Tyrion, I need for you to make a uh, dexterity saving throw as well. Okay, do I get my aura bonus as a snake? Uh, as a snake, I'm going to say no. Ugh, fair enough. You do have snake aura. <laughs> you, don't you do have, have green snake. You do have green snake aura right now, but okay, that might have green been snake, snake aura range. sounds like a personal problem. That might that be, more be discussed with my medical professionals. So I'm just going to assume it's nice. a straight roll. Ooh, dexterity. <sighs> Eleven. All right, and his Roxarans is a uh, seventeen. Succeed. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage, good sir. What level are you casting oh. this at? Uh, it's a cantrip. Okay. Just wasn't sure if you were increasing it at all. No, can't. Okay. It's, uh, that's no, six you points. Can. Uh, no, you can you can increase it if you want. It's a cantrip. Yeah. Yeah, cantrip. but you can still increase it. The spells the damage increases by one d eight when you re oh when you reach fifth level. I lied. Shut up, Nathan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep, yep. Yeah, so you can, I was about to say it's two d eight. Okay, I lied. Shut up. Mhm. Mm uh, right. It's uh that's six points of radiant damage. All right. So. All right. So. Oh wait, no, he succeeds. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Tyrion, you so Tyrion, as you are currently grappled around uh, Roxaren, uh. uh out, seemingly out of the out of the out of the ceiling out of the chain ceiling, just a small bead of uh, divine light pops into pops into existence and just hangs there for a slight for a solitary second before it boom, just straight down onto Roxaren and the snake's form, boom, illuminating this entire area. Karma, uh, Emiral, and Clarissa, you all have to shield your eyes as this just divine light just comes slamming down into it. Tyrion, uh, you take uh, the six points of damage. Six, and then he took his damage as well. All right. Well, he succeeded his saving throw. Right. He took his he took his damage as well. But he shouldn't take damage. Roxarian shouldn't. If you roll a seventeen, that beats my save of fourteen. I mean, yes, he did take damage. <laughs> Definitely. I'm gonna go with he took half damage on that because. <laughs> yes. So. I'm, I'm surprised you're questioning the DM's level and judgment on this, but okay. Hey, last time I got an inspiration die out of it, so... That's fair. <laughs> uh, okay, so as my bonus action, uh, Blinky is going to try and attack again. Go for it. <sighs> that's better that time, this time. That's a natural 17. Plus uh, 23. Okay. <laughs> That'll hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Ooh, double eights for 16 points of damage. Nice. Force, 16 points of force damage. Nice. So. And I'm out of actions. All right. So as 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 the uh, as as you con as after this uh, divine light just completely expands and dissipates, leaving the room with small little glowing orbs that seem to disappear very quickly. Um, uh, Roxaren looks up, uh, f thoroughly confused and slightly blinded for a second. Looks up directly at as this giant. Um, 
as this large divine mace is currently standing, uh, currently hovering directly in front of him. He just looks at it, and the mace just comes, wham, directly over right on top of his head. <laughs> it lets out a nice concussive. Uh, he uh, shakes it, shakes his head a little bit. <sighs> You're gonna regret that. Brings us to the top of the round, Riven. Oh yes, that is me. Yes. Um, all right, so hasted action to try to break that goddamn grackle. Grackle. Eighteen. That'll gra that'll break it. Oh, thank God! All right, and then I'm gonna shadow step behind him all to. Right. Can I occupy this space? Uh, you can probably occupy this space if you're trying to go behind him. Right, I wasn't sure if that was a wall. You can go there if you want to. to like, yeah, I just be want to be up on his ship from behind. Oh yeah, you can do that. <laughs> and then make my two <laughs> swings with my my staff. Go for it. Well, with my spear thing. And the so, first one is with advantage. Go for it. Because of shadow stepping. Because of shadow stepping. Which is good because I rolled a 17 and a 1. So. <laughs> that <laughs> first is. was a natural 17 plus, plus a bajillion on top of that, plus 8. Yeah, that is. Okay. <laughs> plus all of the, the things. Uh, the D8, yeah, the D8. Plus a D4. 3, 4, 8 points of piercing damage on the first swing. All right. So as your as your form coalesces and dives and in, dives into the sha dives into the shadows, it, the, uh, the shadow movement psh, darts around the pillars, poof, 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 completely disappearing out of sight. As you slowly rise up from from the shadow from his shadow behind him, you thrust your spear right out of the opening between the snake and uh, right in between the snake. Psh, it slams. You find it. Find purchase in his body. You pull out, psh, uh, leaving a leaving a smear of a, a streak of blood. Psh, Second swing is a 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 22. That'll hit. Plus eight, man. It's good. Jesus. Two. Nine points of piercing damage off that one. All and right. That's my turn. Right, I'm so low on my damage. As you, as you, as you, as you, as you take your, as you take your spear and jam it right for that same spot, you feel the spear once again sink in just a little bit deeper in that same spot. He lets out a scream of pain. He, uh, I'm gonna say you leave it there for right now. All right. Um, oh, it's in him. Okay. It's currently in him right now. Can I be holding onto it still? Yeah, you're still holding onto it. Like you're okay. just currently like trying to dig the spear just a little deeper into him. Just. Um, you guys are currently trying to like just really make sure this idiot, this guy, cannot move. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's we're great. all up on him. It's great. I mean, you're, you're up. I am going to do something here, and I'm hoping that this will work. I'm going to cast Thorn Lip at his foot. Okay. And what I'm going to do with the Thorn Whip is that when it, if it hits, I want to pull on it. Which I can do. If it's larger or smaller, I can pull the creature up to 10 feet. Which, since it's within the thing, I'm hoping that I can possibly, basically, have his legs go out from underneath him. Okay. Um. You can certainly try. Go for it. This roll is gonna be tough. Uh, that's a spell attack. So. Twenty-five. That'll hit. Now the question is. Now, all right, so that hits. So roll the damage for that. Um, four actually, points of piercing. Okay. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay, so four points of piercing. Okay. All right. Uh, so as you as you take as you take your whip, you sling it directly at his feet. There's a slight crack as it. Whoosh, uh, slams uh, goes uh, goes flying directly at one of his feet. It's currently uh, you see it wrap around um, his left his left ankle uh, is currently where you're holding it. 
Um, uh, if you're wanting to try and pull it out from him, you're going to have to make a strength check. Um, Come on. Uh, strength check? Yep. Just straight roll and a roll to 15. Plus? Nothing. It's just a straight 15. Okay. So, as you have the whip, as you have the whip there, you uh, pull with all your might. You actually feel the you actually feel the thorn whip snap as you as you pull. You go falling backward, uh, catching yourself uh, catching yourself on uh, as you land back on the ground. As, uh, as you land back on the ground, you stand back up. Uh, but uh, thorn whip is currently has been broken after that. All right. Um, anything else? And I'm going to cast a, um, a heal on myself as a bonus action. There's a healing word, I think it is. Or... All right, healing word. Yep, that's fine. Or whatever, the one that's bonus action. I need to find it here. It's either lay on... It's not lay on hands because that's a paladin ability. I think it's healing word, though. All right. Okay. Um, brings us to... Rim's turn. All right. All right, so... Clarissa and a mural, you guys are close enough to the chains that you both are currently now grappled by them. As you feel no, the chains again. As you feel as you feel the chains whoom, whoom, wrap around your legs, uh, immobilizing you, keeping you directly in the same spot. Um, nothing for you. Too large, too large, you're okay. Um, Alright, Roxarin is going to attempt to break the grapple. Uh, so Tyrion, I need for you to roll a Strength check. 22. All right, he rolls a 16 plus 5, puts him at 21. Um, so he is still grappled. Um... However, since he took dam since he took damage this last turn, he is going to use his he is going to use his unnerving mask. Um, so, as as he's currently as as you currently still have him grappled and uh, your teeth still embedded in, embedded in him, uh, he. You feel him struggle. You feel him push against you, you, but your your body manages to constrict even more and more around him. Um, uh, he he looks at he looks around at you, all of you and says, "Fools, you are getting in the way of our plan. It's fine. Let's see." And he look and he looks down over at you, Clarissa, and says, "And what are you all afraid of?" As his eyes glint red. Alright. This brings us to Tyrion. Uh, Tyrion, I need for you to make a wisdom saving throw. So, still in snake form. I think wisdom for me is a straight roll. Uh, your, your mental stats stay the same when you're in beast form. No, so, I don't get my... Oh, well... Uh, natural 20 or 23? Right. You said wisdom, right? Wisdom saving throw, yeah. Okay, so natural 20 or 23. Alright. Oh, I swear. That cat just stole my dice! Get back here! Get back <laughs> here! What the fuck? That is not yours. That is not yours. Oh, my That's cat just found that d20 that I lost like two months ago. <laughs> Where the hell was it? Good kitty. Sorry. I've also realized we're still in the Destiny directory because I'm an idiot. God damn it. Thank you, XO. My bad, buddy. Section <laughs> 40. Okay. So, so that was my saving throw. Okay, saving throw, natural 20. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, as you mm -hmm. as your eye as your eye glances over at Roxar glances over at Roxarian, you see that you are no longer holding um 
Uh, you are no longer holding this entity of Roxarian, but you see your old mentor currently bloodied, broken. But something seems off about him. You, it's almost like, it's almost like he's being seen through a watery through the through the surface of a pool, of a watery pool that has just been that just has had many ripples come across it. Um, uh, you maintain you maintain all f uh, all of your main facilities. Uh, it is your go. What are you doing? Still a snake. Yep, still a snake. Uh... So is he still hasted as a snake? Oh, he is still that's hasted an excellent as a snake. question. Yes. All right, well, I wasted that last turn. Thank you, Karma. Um, all right, well... I'm still a snake. I'm still channeling Serpent Rage, so I'm going to sure. tighten and bite. All right, go ahead and uh, make your two attacks. Isn't it... Four? It'll be two attacks. It'll be two attacks. One for the one for the uh, constrict, one for the constrict ability, which kind of one for the constrict. Oh, ability. okay, cool. Yes, the perfect. The other one to continue the bite and actually add pressure to it. Cool. And with haste, do I get to do that twice? Just out of curiosity. This will be your two attacks. So um, you'll do it. But I have two attacks. <clears throat> the snake only has one. So oh, you're gotcha. one so of you're yeah, using gotcha, gotcha, both gotcha, gotcha. of these for your uh, a regular attack bon at action and your Okay, attack. well, that's an actual one. Okay. So. Um, go ahead and make a uh, another uh, strength check. Strength check. Right. That's going to be a 19. Total? Total. So as you, uh, as you, as you can, as you constrict and constrict and attempt to constrict and tighten your body, you actually, uh, there's actually a moment where you actually have to loosen just enough, just a little bit. Uh, you feel him wriggle at that point, and you actually feel, um, you actually feel him manage to slip uh, directly out from underneath, out from your, out from your grasp, and actually manage to just dive or get through, get through some, one of the holes. Um, you slither around, reeling, trying to find him. You see him directly in front of you. You go in for your bite attack. Which is going to be a... What do I... Is it a straight roll for bite? Do I add something? It's still your... It's still your... Um, it's just your, like, regular attack. So it's, like, still your... Like, it's your uh, your roll plus your strength. Is what you're... Um, 17. 17. Okay, 17 will miss. Um, okay. So... As you as you go as you go forward and as you as you are reeling from him escaping escaping your grapple you uh, you you t you slither turn your head you find your you find your prey you go lunging forward at him mouth wide open he actually takes his he takes his chain and just slams your head poof, knocking it knocking completely aside you go s slamming off to the side uh, you recoil back up into your into your attack position ready to go all right. Brings us to Karma. You're up. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go for the uh, same thing I did last turn, except instead of throwing the Valerian Legacy, I'm gonna throw the uh, the uh, Venom Blade, which should still have its Venom on it, because uh, it's until I until it actually hits is when it actually the Venom goes away. Uh, unless you say otherwise, obviously. I believe it lasts for a minute, which it hasn't been a minute yet, so you're okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going to uh, Am I within five feet, or am I throwing, or am I attacking? Um, you are currently within five feet. I mean, it's five. the same role either way. I'm just you're within five. Curious. You are within five feet of him. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and attack with that. Uh, no, I rolled a four on the dice, plus seven, so that's yeah. that's uh, 11. No, not so. Gonna as you, <laughs> as you, um, as you take a, as you as you take the as you take the venom dagger and go to lunge at him. At this point, he's current. At this point, he's currently aware of all of all his surroundings. After slamming the snake in the face, he looks down, sees you darting towards him. He takes the same. He takes a second chain and poof, knocks your uh, knocks your hand out of the way. Poof, ah, 
Uh, look down. There's a giant welt on your hand now. No permanent damage, but ugh, damn it, that sting. All right, so bonus action. I'm gonna grab a regular. The I have two regular daggers, Voyeur Legacy, and then the Venom Dagger on my on my belt. Of returning, I'm gonna take a regular dagger and attack him with that. Okay, go for it. Okay, that's better. 18 on the dice plus uh, I think it's plus five. Plus five. Okay, that'll hit. I can check. No, plus six. So that'll hit. I will roll. Uh, sneak. Yep. Because he's ridiculously shrouded. Here goes. Oh wow, there's a uh, two sixes. Uh, that's 12, 15, uh, 17, and 19 points of piercing damage. Wow, nice. Uh, right. Nice. Nice. Oh, also, I you didn't have me make a wisdom save. Should I do I, that? I need you to make a wisdom save. Thank you for that, and take an inspiration dice that you can use after the wisdom save. Okay. That's a d6? Yeah, it's a d6 uh, inspiration dice that you can use ah. that, you, that you can use after you've the, the wisdom save has resolved. Uh, wisdom save is a 5. Okay. So as... As you go, as as you as you as you take your as you take your dagger and you go and you go striking towards striking towards his upper calf, you find per, or his uh, his calf, you find purchase. You pull the dagger across. As you glance up and look and look up, you see and you you look up and see into the face of your mother, uh, as she stares down at, as she stares down at you, um, eyes glistening with tears. You. <sighs> You continue to pull, and there's a streak of blood as 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 she as she let as the image before you lets out a piercing scream that just fills your ears. Um, you are now considered uh, frightened until the end of uh, your next turn. Uh, right. Uh, anything else, Karma? Nope, that's all I can do. All right, brings us to Clarissa. Go ahead and make your wisdom saving throw. Okay, and this is magic, right? Um, yes, it is. All right, so we're looking at an unnatural twenty. Perfect. So as you glance up, as you glance up, you can see the face and the face of one of your. Uh, of of a dwarven of a dwarven individual um, that then trans that then uh, transforms and changes to the face of your father, um, a look of just utter disappointment on both of their faces as they just constantly are, um, as they as they as they look down as they look down upon you. But also for you, it's also like seeing it through like the image of a pool of, that has just been uh, struck by much uh, by stones and by different water and many ripples have just come across it. Um, you are unaffected. Go for it. What are you doing? Okay, so we're going to try something different here. I'm going to use message and try to talk to the thing. Okay. And say, uh, if you're so afraid of Kariffy fish, and we are currently kicking the shit out of you, why don't you stop fighting us and help us eliminate him so you can go about your evil business in peace? Make a persuasion check. <sighs> Okay. Oh, good. I'm good at these. Uh, 19. It just, the 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 visage just gives a odd look, and his head just kind of turns and says, "Lord Corphis has a place for us all, and we are the arbiters of your destruction." His plan is our plan, so that we are never forgotten again. Is what, so what is what you hear back? So what what the, what was that? Is that a bonus action or is that my full action? Uh, message would be is what a cantrip. Yeah, I believe. Uh, I'll say that's your bonus action. All right. So keeping the connection open, what okay. I want to do then is say. Uh, well, what is this plan of yours? And then use the tech thoughts again. 
This time, this time, All right. we're going, this time going balls deep. I want to get deep thoughts, not just surface thoughts. All right, make, um, okay. I'm just gonna make a wisdom save then. Natural two. That sucks. Um, <laughs> and I think you also get, I think you get to deal some damage with this as well. Guys are using some new spells that I'm not used to, man. It's weird. I love it. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just gonna keep punching him. That's fair. Punch him in the dick! <laughs> Does it have a dick? I'm pretty sure it's just a giant hate monster. Do you hate monsters that have dicks? Uh, you look down and he does apparently seem to have... I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see because there's like this very <laughs> odd chain loincloth there. And you're currently behind him. God damn it. It's kind of hard to see right now. <laughs> Not expecting that hard. I mean, you're looking at his ass, and I mean, it's no, it's all right ass. You've seen better, but I mean, once again, it's also covered by like that Look chain that loincloth. Butt. That yeah. is a nice um, butt. Okay, <laughs> I like that butt. That's it. Anyways, um, uh, Cl uh, Clarissa, you hear the connection, or you hear the voice say, "Why would I ever tell it?" <sighs> as you, as you pro, as your mental probe begins to dig deeper and deeper into his brain, um, a flash of images come. Uh, come flying across you. Um, you see uh, uh, I can't type this. I'm just going to have to say it. You see uh, you see you see in your mind's eye you see two you see two large pillars. You see a small bead of light in the middle of them uh, followed by a sudden bright flash. Your vision a bright flash of light. Your vision shifts and changes uh, to a very small to a completely dark except for a completely dark um, room lit by can lit only specifically by candlelight. Uh, books and uh, books and bed and a bed and a bed uh, um, are in the are in this room. Uh, a form stirs on the bed. Uh, it sits. It's it slowly sit, it slowly sits up. White hair tumbling down um, over. Over the shoulders, as the as the image shifts and as the image shifts and changes again, you swear. Uh, just as before it shifts, you swear you see pointed ears um, coming out from beneath the white hair. It shifts again um, to a place wreathed in fire and flame, and you see within those flames. As you glance around, you see. Um, uh, you see, uh, sh different shadows flickering in and out. Shadows almost seem humanoid, others seem elongated and almost, cr almost monster and creature-like. Um, you, uh, but, and you can, and at, at the, t on, on the heads of where all these creatures are, you see these burning eyes that just bore <clears throat> holes directly into you, and a single thought, uh, come, a single thought comes to you that says, we will not be forgotten, never again. Uh, the image and the vision fades one more time to a small, all white light that seems to be peering um, at, surrounded completely by darkness and you see and as you glance towards the circle of light forward in front of you um, you see almost a dark spot moving closer and closer and closer and closer and just when it's about to come into visual range whoosh, the image fades and com the, the image and the uh, vision fades whoosh, you're back in front of uh, with your you're back with your friends looking in go ahead and uh, roll um, uh, go ahead and roll 2d6 of psychic damage okay that was fun uh, six nice. All right, anything else? Uh, nope. All right, bring this to Salix, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna try casting Guiding Bolt again, this time at third level. Go for it. Okay. That's uh, an 18. That'll miss, unfortunately. Can I use my inspiration dice? Yes, go for it. Okay. Can I just add that onto my roll? 
Yep, you add it onto your roll. How about 24? Does that hit? That, that'll hit. Nice. <laughs> Got the 6 on it. At third level, that's 6d6 radiant damage. Go for it. Oh, that's a lot of 6s. Oh. <laughs> 6, 12, 18, 24, Holy shit. 7... We need 29. 29 points of Ooh. radiant damage. Damn! Damn! That's that's rough, man. And uh, attacks... What was, it? What, was it? what was it again? 29? 29 points of radiant damage. Alright. And attacks against it... The, 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 cat, the attacks next, against it have advantage. The, the next attack that goes against it has advantage. Yeah, the it. next attack, right. So, on my bonus action... If Blinky swipes that again, does he have advantage? Uh, yes, it would, technically. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to use it on that. I'm okay. Not, I'm not gonna let someone else do that. Instead, I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Healing Word. Go for it. On, who's looking, who's looking, on Emerald. All right. 1d4 plus wisdom plus 2 plus spell level. D4. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Emerald's healed ten points of uh, eight, ten HP. Nice. All right. Um, that's my turn. Nice. Uh, so as you as you take judgment and bring it up once again in that overarching uh, slant, uh, overarching uh, form, you slam it onto the ground both hands this time, determined to make sure that it doesn't miss. Uh, you see the 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 radiant energy pull, pulse from it in almost a wave of of radiant energy as it goes f uh, flying towards it. Uh, you expect uh, you ex uh, Roxarian, Roxarian looks over and sees it coming towards him. Uh, he's just about to move and charge right as Cl right as Clarissa. Um, Asks her, uh, mutters something incomprehensible to you. His eyes go wide and freeze. As he looks down, the energy, boom, comes crashing into him, slamming into his side. Uh, just as Clarissa stands there with a slight smirk on her face. Um, uh, Silex, I also need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Should I do that at the beginning of your turn? Wisdom saving throw, he says. Wisdom saving throw, yes. Um... Twenty-two. Yeah. All right. Um, as you go, as as you glance as you glance up for after your attack, you see his face. You see his face and his form shimmer, and almost as though you're looking at through it a foggy mirror. You see the images of your brothers, all bloodied and broken, standing there, all mouthing a single word. Why? as they look over towards you. But it's through a foggy mirror, almost, and so you're able to, while shaken by it, you are managed to, in the heat of battle, stay stay firm and rooted to what you know is true. Um, this brings us to top of the round. Riven, go ahead and make your wisdom saving throw. I'm behind him. Does that matter? Did I still just, get hit by his fear effect? Like, you just gotta be able to, you gotta be able to see him. If you see him, and you're in third, you gotta, if you see him, you... I have to do it, so go ahead. 18? 14 18. plus 4? Alright. Uh, you also, as you glance up, as you glance up towards him, see the friends, the individuals you felt close to at the monastery. You see your old teachers, but they're all blurry, and they all seem to just be slightly off from what you remember. Um, you still managed to stay in, in control of your facilities, but, uh, you're, you're all right. Um, your spear is still currently embedded into him at this point. Uh, what would you like to do? Question. Yes. Does Thunder Wave emanate from me or the spear that's currently inside of him? Technically, it would be from the spear, since you don't have magical abilities yourself. I kind of have magic. Weird magic. Eh. Alright. It just uh, sweeps out from you, so I just wanted to clarify right. that. That's that's fair. It will sweep out from the spear. Which is currently inside of it. The, the tip of it is, yeah. It's not like super embedded deep, but the tip of it is embedded into it. Hmm. 
So. Can uh, how's he looking? Can I tell how he's looking? Uh, you see some. You see some. Uh, you see some red, like very red, almost kind of molten blood, pulling, pour, uh, pouring from different uh, attacks and different, uh, or from different uh, wounds that he's taken and different things like that. So he's 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 looking rough, but not quite on death's door yet. All right, I'm just gonna lay into him then. Go for um, it. I'm gonna make. I'll start with my regular action, which is two swings. Go for it. Is the first one with advantage because of guiding yes, bolt? Yes, because of guiding bolt. The first one will be with advantage. Well, I feel like that's a waste because that was a 19, and that was an 11. Uh, natural 19 plus 8. Okay, yep, that'll hit. All right, first one. It's a D8 plus 4. Three, seven, eleven points of damage on the first swing. Uh, piercing damage, nice. Okay. Piercing damage on the first swing. Okay. All right. Twenty-two, twenty-three. Twenty-three will hit. Same thing again. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve points of damage. Nice. All right, okay. and then my hasted. Still hasted. Go for it. Another swing, because I'm just like I'm just gonna lay into him. That's what I can do. Those reasons. Uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 21. That'll hit. <laughs> <laughs> I love Next... how to put a plus eight. <laughs> it's so stupid. Next level gleeful <laughs> chuckles are the best. Ooh, yay, that one that one hurts. That's two max die. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 points of damage. Ooh. Oh, that's right. two max, it's a four and an eight. Alright, and then I'm gonna burn some points here and take two more swings at him! Oh my god. Lunks, man. 19, 20. A 12. 20 to hit? Yes. It's a T6. Hold on a second. Okay, go ahead. That's a 4 plus 4, so 8 budgeting. 8 budgeting? Okay. And then magical budgeting, if it matters. Okay. And another natural 19. Jesus. Monks plus 7. Man. Monks, man. <laughs> Well, that was disappointing, though, because that was only a 2 on the damage, plus 4, so 4, 6. Alright, minus 7. Cool. Uh, yeah. And that's pretty much everything I can do, except for uh, around oh the entire God. thing three times, but I'm not going to do that. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. Speed speed. So, <laughs> so, as Riven currently has his spear embedded in him, he pulls it out, and the rest of you, the rest of you are kind of in kind of kind of, are just looking at him before all of a sudden all of you just see a <laughs> just shadow dart around him it's too fast for any of your eyes to see as uh you look back behind Riven and you don't really see him move at all except for a few of you who see him move just slightly to an inch to the left as this as as soon as Riven is like move, moves that shift to uh to the left uh, Roxarian just looks down at himself and sees just scrapes and cuts all across his body with, uh, uh, all across his body from where, from what you can tell, Riven's spear just penetrated into his torso. He looks down and says, you son of a, at which point he doesn't even get a chance to, give me a chance to say, because Riven's already planted his, uh, staff, in the, uh, his spear into the ground, psh, head first, has pole vaulted onto it and just has brought one foot poof, slamming directly across his face poof, uh, as as he does as as he does his head snaps to the side poof, and uh, Riven actually Riven actually manages to push off the spear and with a huge overhead punch just comes slamming down into the ground with his bringing his head or his fist down into Roxarian's head poof, uh, Roxarian uh, Roxarian's face goes pl slamming into the ground Riven lamps three point landing bounces back towards the spear grabs it pulls it out of the ground roxarian looks up at you pushing out of the pulling his head out of the ground <sighs> a 
dark glint in his eyes. He's looking rough, but he's he's hanging on. Hey, I finally feel like I've done something this fight, so I'm happy. <laughs> Brings us to a mural. What are you up? What are you doing? Seeing this, how many people are within the five foot radius of him? Like the five foot within uh, his space. Five of you are currently within the five foot radius of him. What are you doing, Amiro? I can probably only do one thing right now, and that's do it cast another thorn whip because I don't have anything else. Do it or lose it. That's because I don't. I don't have a spell that won't do an AOE to it, do it or, or fire. It. Do it. Uh, Make it natural Make your plane. Turn. <sighs> Go for it. Sweet Jesus. And that's eight points of piercing damage. Okay. And I want to just have it like grappled around his head if I can, like and just hold it there. Um... Since he's you down, either, you can you can either grapple him or you can make the attack. There's depends on which one you want to do. There's a difference for this one. So what? So grapple? Do you want to grapple him or do you want to do the damage? Well, it says that I can hit him with it and then pull him down. So like that's my okay. that's my plan on the spell. Like keep him down. So, so you're doing the damage, and then you're gonna pull him down into the ground. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So as you as you cast the as you cast the thorn whip, you grab uh, you you send it reeling you send it reeling towards him. Uh, it he he manages to bring his arm up just in time. The thorn whip wraps around his arm. The thorns embedding into his uh, into his uh, his already his already kind of uh, chained uh, and uh, chained forearm. Uh, he pulls locked in a locked in a contest of strength with you. Uh, you manage to pull and yank down on the thorn whip as his hand goes, poof, as his arm goes slamming down into the ground. Uh, the, all right, that's where we'll leave that. I didn't realize it. I just looked it up. At fifth level, I do 2d6. I only rolled okay, one. Okay, so on in that. the future, you need to tell me what level you're casting it at. You can't just tell me you're doing that right it's... at... It's a cantrip. It increases the level on the. Okay, then do uh, your one more. Damage. Then do your one more d6. I just looked at it. Uh, six points would be with the double. Okay. All right, it's fine. Keep up on your characters, guys. I'm like that's that's something you should know, and it's not something I should be having to find out after you've done the attack. Um, please be keeping up on your characters. Um, okay. This brings us to... Room's turn. Alright, so... You are all still... All of you who are grappled are still currently grappled. And so, the room can't really do anything at this point. This brings us to his turn. Okay. There's really only one thing he can do in this situation, so... He is going to make sure I have this correct. All right, so he is so Roxarian. You see, all of you see as Roxarian uh, takes it, takes his chains and doesn't even uh, start to swing them with his wrists and his arms. He actually just kind of uh, he takes he takes he takes them. Grabs them and start and starts places his hands out and his arms out in a large T in a, almost a cross formation, um, standing there. He begins to spin faster and faster and faster. Um, as he does, he's going. As he does, I need for all of you to make um, uh, dexterity saving throws, please. I believe sixteen. 16. 16 for Clarissa, 15. I have Sadix. an advantage on deck saving throws because of haste. Okay. Correct? Yes, you do. Yep. I also have that. Yes, you do. 16. Okay. Karma? We don't need to talk about that second roll. We don't need no. to discuss it. Oh, shit. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, 20 non-natural. 23 for Ryden. 
Thank God for advantage. And from from evasion, if I succeed on this, I take nothing. If I don't succeed, I take half. All right. All of you take... What is it, 19? Yep. All of you take 19 points of bludgeoning damage as he just begins to spin faster and faster and all of his chains... Just go slamming into each and every single one of you, except for Salix, because he's out of range on this. Um, and all of you are pushed back five feet. I failed with a 23? So yep. I'm not a snake anymore, right? You are no longer a snake. Yes. How does that work? Do I take so the you ta- so you currently are as five- myself? No, Salix, you don't get pushed back. You're not within range. Um, Wait, so, so why did I... You don't- Salix, you do not take the damage, because you, oh. are, you are out of range of this attack. Uh, oh so, so um, yeah, you took 19, so uh, tearing you take a total of 14 points of damage because uh, your snake formerly had 5 left. So uh, myself and Riven, we take half of 19 then. Cause... It's 9 rounded up. You guys didn't succeed. But uh, e- e- even on fails, we, get, we take half damage if okay. it's dexterity. So you take half of it. So. All right. So he he's standing there. Um, so, all, so Riven takes half of, what was that, half of 19, so... 10. 10. Make sure you're marking this on your characters, guys. Yep, I deducted mine off. Or I will do it for you. Okay. Alright, so... He slowly, he slowly, ultimately spin. He'll, he's ultimately slowly starts, uh, slowly stops spinning, uh, and he's standing there looking very bloodied and bruised. Well done. I'm glad that someone will remember. <laughs> he coughs, and you see a spittle of blood go. Uh, crossing, go down across, uh, go streaking across the floor. Um. <laughs> well fought, all of you. <laughs> uh, this brings us to Tyrion. Your turn. Okay. Well, as I am now myself again, I'm going to retort with. We've barely even begun, and Mu, am I constricted here after reverting uh, forms? You are no or... lo- yeah, you're no longer you are no longer grappled. Karma is no longer grappled because that, bro- because that attack would have broken the grapple. And you're no longer grappled either, and Clarissa is no longer grappled either. So. All right, so I'm going to let me just quick check my spells here. Right, I'm going to move. To him, over here, and uh, I'm now back in full-on humanoid rage. So I'm going to attack. Go for it. Smite his ass. I will be. Well, maybe not his ass. I'm going more. Just his ass. Nothing else. Um, (laughs) twenty-two to hit. That'll hit. And divine smite. Quick page check here. Mm-hmm. My, <laughs> I love it. My book has like a crease where the paladin stuff is. Like, can you just <laughs> open it right up? Okay, so I'm gonna cast divine smite uh, first level, but I'll do the normal damage first. One d eight plus five. Okay, so that's six. I rolled a one on that. That's uh, that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to cast this at first level. So two more d8 for the radiant damage. Haste does not give me any uh, bonus to attacks, right? No. Gives you another attack. Oh, okay. Well, the radiant damage is good. That's 11. All right. Um, and I am going to attack again. What was what was the ulti- What was the first damage? Uh, the first damage was I rolled a one, so that'd be okay. 
Uh, hold on. That would be... 1d8 plus 5. So 6. First okay. damage was 6, and radiant six. damage was 11. Alright, so total of... Uh, then radiant damage was 11. Mm-hmm. How do you want to do this? Oh! Um, there we go. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? All right. So, totally did I kill him with the piercing or the radiant damage? Radiant. Excellent. I want to impale him with my sword and channel my radiant energy through my sword and make him explode with radiant energy. That's how I want to do this. All right. So, as you... <clears throat> As oh, you, I'm right there. As you, as you, <laughs> as you, as you, ra as you race forward with this green energy, your hair, uh, with this green energy flowing from your eyes, your elven, uh, your elven rage billowing forth. You let out a giant scream as he brings up one of his, brings up one of his chains to try and deflect. You dodge direct, you dodge directly underneath it and just come slamming directly into his torso, burying your sword all the, burying your sword about halfway through. <clears throat> He breathes as you, as you, as you stand, as you stand there, you, as you stand there, you allow a small smile to come across your, come across your lips as you, as come across your lips as, um, you feel your blade begin to vibrate with divine energy as this green glow encompasses it, and it, it the blade begins to slide even farther into his body, all the way up to the hilt. Ugh. And, it's, um, and it stays there. Um, is my fear effect still active? Am I seeing this as my mother? This being you are seeing right this now? as your mother at this point in time. So then, yeah, I'm. I whenever when this happens, I'm gonna start running at Tyrion. Okay. So like as, in character. So as uh, okay. So that's so this will be that'll be a reaction to this. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, Tyrion, as as you as you're as you're sta as you're standing there, um, as you're standing there with the hilt all the way up to his chest, uh, you hear him breathe out and in a very slight whisper, only that you can hear. He's close now. The ritual is imminent. Soon, brothers, sisters, I will join you. His eyes flare open and look at all of you, or look and look over, look over to you, Tyrion, and he says, "But you will not live to see our new world." A bright spark on one of the chains near his, um, near his body. Uh, ha you, Tyrion, you see imbued with an, a, si a symbol insignia that you've seen only but a few hours ago, as. It glows red hot, and from him, <laughs> a large fireball emits from him. I need for Karma, Tyrion, uh, who else is in range of that? Me. Karma, Tyrion, Riven, Clarissa, Emiral, and Salix, all to make dexterity saving throws. Which you get plus three, four now, if you're within uh, ten feet of me, because I'm finally so, an elf again. So that 23. Would mean, that would mean Karma and also Riven, 23. Riven get the plus three. Damn, Grace with the 22, damn. Jesus, alright. <laughs> 11. Thank god I'm hasted still. 21 with plus 3. I rolled a 1 on my first okay. one. Alright. So. That was the third one of the night that I've rolled with advantage. Alright, so all of you would have taken 29 points of fire damage um, if you, since all of you succeeded. Uh, for those of you who do not have the evasion feat, you guys take uh, 
15 points of fire damage as this shockwave of fire energy goes exploding out from his body. All, pu all pushing. Is it magical energy? Uh, yes, it is. Then people within 10 feet of me take half of that 15, so that would be, what, 8? <laughs> yeah, it takes 8. I fucking hate all of you. Um, so that's, that's, well, I'm it, it doesn't really matter because the only people that would affect is uh, Karma and Ryben. <laughs> okay, and I'm just they, saying. That no, I, it's fine. My I'm auras just, are back. I haven't gotten to use them all night. Someone just, turned me into a snake. <laughs> just letting you know. Um, uh, so, uh, so Karma and Karma, as you see, as you see this, uh, you glance down, and for a second you see your mother, and then the image shifts back into Roxarian. You actually, in that moment, see the energy dissipate or emitting you bounce back able to get out of able to get out of it um riven you run you shadow step along the walls just just darting just darting away as you see as you see this and recognize it clarissa uh you try to run away but you are also caught in, but you are caught in the blast um and mural is also caught in the blast and i believe salix was also caught in the blast you all lie face down or or you all lay, you all lay on the ground sprawled out Burned, tired, bloodied, but alive. Clarissa, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I, not, I'm unconscious. Clarissa currently. <laughs> Clarissa does not respond. Clarissa doesn't respond. <laughs> At that point, I'm just gonna like, Many fall, cast like <laughs> down on my hands, pretty much prone. At this point. I'm looking both angrily and confused back and forth between Roxarian and, and Tyrion, and then well, eventually... Roxarian's body is no longer there. It, well, okay, there. yeah, where his body was. Right. And then I slowly sheath my daggers and go towards Clarissa and see what I can do to help. Okay. I'm going to put 20 points into Clarissa and 15 into Emerald. Okay. So, Clarissa, you come back to consciousness... Uh, feeling the warm energy spread across your spread across your body. Um, the rest of you are currently standing or getting in the process of getting up. Can I walk over to Shao? If you want to. Yeah, after I see that Clarissa has been healed and okay, I'm also going to okay. head towards Shao, avoiding the horrific lava pit. Yep. You walk your way. You make all of you make your uh, you make your way over towards Shao. I'm um, still pretty much crouched at this point. Check okay. the room things. Okay. Go ahead and make a perception check. Ugh. Yeah. Seventeen. Um, you do notice one other area that looks like the floor is not as sturdy as it could be. You point it out, and you tell people to pretty much avoid that area. Um, oh, I was talking about loot, but that works too. Uh, if you're looking for loot, uh, I mean, there's nothing really left of Roxarian's body at this point in time, so... Oh yeah, and he wasn't really using weapons to attack us anyway, right. so that's... Oh, I'm just looking out to see if there's anything worth taking with us, that's all. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, Salix, so you get over towards, um, get up to Shao. Um, get up to Shao, and, uh, um, uh, you find her unconscious, um, breathing and still alive, but just almost as though she's more in a sleep than anything. What are you guys doing? Uh, I just uh, try to try to wake her, just by giving her a shake or splashing uh, some water on her. You attempt to, you shake her and uh, splash some water on her. Nothing. She doesn't really seem to come to consciousness at all. She um, still just seems almost as though she's sleeping at this point. Can I make some sort of... Uh, like a medicine check or something or an intelligence to see if uh, she is just asleep or if this is some sort of magically induced um if you're trying to do magic 
Hell induced, uh, you will need to make an arcana check. If you just want to see if she's just kind of unconscious and stuff, that's probably going to be more, it's going to be more of a medicine check. Okay. So what do you yeah, want I want to make a medicine check just to okay. see if she's anything other than unconscious. Okay. That's a natural 20. Uh, she seems unconscious. Uh, overall, her she seems fine. There is a slight trickle of blood uh, coming out of her mouth. You um, just inspect that. It seems like she just kind of bit her mouth during the attack and during the or during whatever form of trauma she went through beforehand. Um, but overall, she seems relatively unharmed. Uh, you're not a hundred percent sure what is keeping her unconscious at this point. It possibly could be something magical. Um, it's not necessarily your area of expertise, but it seems to be, uh, that she is just not, not waking at this moment in time. Okay. Tyrion, come over here. Am I not already over there? Yeah, no, Tyrion's already over there. Sorry, I just didn't move my guy. Yeah, uh, no, uh, no, it's fine. We're using theater of the mind at this point, anyways. Okay. I'm over here, so it's... See if you can get her to wake up. As this is going on, I I at first went up to go and see if there's anything I can do. Once I saw they were handling it, I'm gonna go towards the door and just kind of watch the door, make sure if anything comes in, I want to just shank the motherfucker. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's all I can do. You go up to the closed door. It's closed, but you prepare yourself, making sure that if anything comes in, you can quote unquote shank that motherfucker. Yep, that's the plan. All right, well, okay. Um, going to take a moment to recover from my rage and get back into my normal wood elf zen mode mm -hmm. and speak Xiao's name very clearly to her. Okay. Let's see if that does anything. Xiao, wake up. It's Tyrion. No response. Oh, okay. Well, so if you tried shaking her, I tried speaking to her. I feel like reviving her here is uh, beyond our means. And I could try some spells, but I'm concerned about what we might need to get out of here. Well, Roxary spoke of an impending ritual, and it's clear to me that we must stop it at all costs. So I'm going to sheathe sword and put away shield and try to pick Xiao up and start heading to the door. Easy enough to pick up. You, She lifts gin very gingerly in your arms, um, and being an elf, you have more natural strength than most uh, most um, most more, most mortal or most uh, humanoid creatures do. Um, you walk, you begin walking towards the door. Um, you eventually make it across the room and make it to the door at this point. Uh, you glance about. Um, glance about the hallway. Glance about the hallway, and um, that is outside of the door after opening it up, and um, you see back the way that you guys originally came. Everything, uh, and you also um, see that the hallway continues even farther down um, the direction you were heading originally. Are there, any other, are there any other exits from the room besides the one we came in? Not from what you can tell, no. There's nothing in the room except chains and Chains, pillars. Two uh, if you want to make an um, investigation check and spend a few minutes looking around the room, you can do that. Sure. Okay. Go ahead and make your investigation check. Nine. It's a really well built room. Real sturdy. It's a lot of chain. It's, it's a lot of chains. A lot of pillars. 
Not really sure how some demon could have built all this. A little confusing, but okay. Alright. If I may suggest, we just... That was, that was really intense. And, uh, I expect that's not the last time we'll see Broxarian. Hopefully he'll, uh, he and his boss, Corphus, will think twice before tangling, tangling with us again. I can tell you that Corphus is down here with us. You think Corphus is down here? Yeah, I think this is just the beginning. Oh, goodness. Perhaps we should rest here for just a little bit and then continue going down. That'd be smart. I don't think this is the end of it at all. I think this is just the beginning. If if we have to face something like that again, I don't think I'll be able to. We'll be okay, Emerald. <laughs> we'll be facing something far worse. And we will triumph. Well, if... Uh... I don't think we're going to find a, probably a safer location than where we are right now. Despite the whole chains coming out of the wall things. Um, maybe make camp in the center of the room. I'll take first watch. Keep an eye out for stuff. You want to take a full rest? I was suggesting just, just a few minutes. I'm good with that. I would agree. We need to find a way out of here. Yeah. Or find a way to. I think, I think our best bet is to return what we know and then come back. We at least know what we're expecting down here. How about we keep it, keep going? If we think there's something in here worth pursuing. Yeah, there's there's no reason to go back. We know that there's no exit where we came from. We got to keep on going forward. We gotta as, try and find the invest. As you're having this conversation, you hear a. You hear coming from the hallway, um, a loud. Uh, <laughs> with I'm assuming karma there already. It sounds yeah. like you hear that. You hear that about three or four times, um, some overlapping, some at the same some at the same time um, and you hear the unmistakable sound of chains rattling you glance around and look around the room and nothing nothing's moving no wind is disturbing any of these chains in here it sounds like it's walking and moving farther away um, I would you like to try and you hear it again for another like f probably, uh, you hear it again about f probably about two or three minutes later this time farther away um, but still very much undistinct, undistinctably that same sound. I was going to say, I'd like to try and stealth if I can, then take a peek outside the door and yeah. see if I can get eyesight on what we're looking at here. Okay. Um, um, go ahead and roll stealth. Okay. Uh, that is a 23. Mm -hmm. You peek your head out the doorway, and you glance back up the way that you came waiting to see if there's any shadows or any movement that is coming your way and nothing seems to really catch your attention um, you glance back down the way that you haven't gone yet and haven't traversed and you see what appears to be the outline of a door and then almost what appears to be stairs continuing down All right, so I'll close the door quietly and then just tell people. Uh, looks like we're going down, guys. Uh, whatever that was, it's probably going down. Maybe a quick short rest. Bandage our wounds. Get ready to go. Agreed. Okay. So taking a short rest, guys? Yeah. Agreed. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure, that seems to be the group consensus. I'm going to attempt to tend to shower as best as I can. Okay. Is it long enough for me to meditate? Uh, it's going to be about 15 to 20 minutes, so probably not. Yeah, I need 30 minutes for meditation. 
Yeah, I'm probably about 15, right, 20 minutes rest. Um, All right, I will. I, I'm not going to attempt to bandage in my wounds. I'm just going to sit right by the door and be ready for anything that comes in. Okay, so Karma is foregoing the uh, the short rest then. Okay. Yes, that's correct. So, the rest of you take some time, apart from Karma, to bandage your wounds, take a rest, catch a breather, come to terms and to grip with a few of you, which has been the second brush with death today. <laughs> um, Clarissa looks... A little shaken, but okay. Um, uh, so go ahead and roll up and roll your hit dice that you would like to use. Um, add those back up. You come to the end of your short rest. Uh, Xiao still sleeping and kind of breathing um, just normally as though she's just in a deep sleep at this point. Um, What would you like to do? Go walk up to Karma. What do you think? Anything out there? Rip Karma. <laughs> I don't know, Karma. Is... I don't know, Sorry. Karma. Is there anything out there? Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh... Karma, what's behind door number one? How about door number two, Karma? What do you think? So before you uh, accidentally, or before your connection got lost, I said, hey, I walked up to Karma, and sir? anything out there, do you think? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear us? Okay. Yes, yeah, so now I can. Uh, okay, so while I, what, during the rest, did I hear anything? I would take a perception check. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Okay. Just for that, rep, for that during the rest. Okay. Uh, 18. Your ears were strained, uh, strained during the entire, the entire short rest that your party was taking, and you swore you heard um, chattering, like almost kind of like a chatter, like a, like a. Uh, type sound almost um, from farther down, um, but it was very faint, and your it was very, it was very, very faint. Um, it stopped after about probably about, probably about two minutes, um, and it was been silence, silent as the grave ever since. All right, I'll relay that information to everybody else. Okay. Well, there's two options back the way we came into the the dark room and. Through the skin wall, probably not possible to get through this direction. Severely down. I stay down. Yeah, I don't think we can go back. I think we need to go forward. Jared, Agreed. You're the one carrying shell. No. Yeah, no, I can continue to carry Xiao. That's not uh, much of a burden. She has she changed all the last two? I don't believe so. Uh, I was tending to her as best I could, so Nathan, did she change it all? She did not change her. She did not. Still seems wanna... to be just kind of those who's sleeping at this point. I want to step out onto the hall and cast light on my shield. Okay. You do as such. Salix, maybe, uh, maybe just let us that can see in this take care of this. Could you put that out? I mean, there are torches along the walls of the staircase, if I remember. Along the ones going up. Um, the ones that are kind of like the ones that you guys came down. This are the ones okay. pushing forward. No, there's no things. more sconces going down. Yeah. You want me to walk down there without being able to see anything? Well, we'll walk ahead of you. And... It's just me? Just me again? Sweet. Awesome. I'm going to go grab a chain. Actually, no. I'm going to cut a length of rope. Okay. And I'm going to put five feet long, and I'm going to hold on to one end, and I'm going to give the other end to Karma. All right. Okay. Yeah. 
if you feel two sharp tugs, that means I see something and go still. Don't move. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So. All right. So I'll take point. Um, I take it that Salix is clo closely thereafter. Kieran's probably towards the end, carrying um, our friend Chow. here, yeah. Chow. All right. I don't. Uh, Clarissa will be following close behind Tyrion at this point. And then Ryan will probably be picking up the back uh, as well. All right. No, I don't know. Uh, what am I doing? <clears throat> You're in the back of the marching order. We're going down. Yeah, that's fine. I got more movement speed right. than anybody and alive. I'm going to stay around Tyrion and just kind of keep an eye on Shao and see if there's anything that I might have an idea of that she might be under. Okay. Right, so as we make our way down, I'm going to obviously keep an eye ahead of us, and I'm going to try and check for traps on the stairs as we head down, um, looking for any pressure plates or okay. go... trip wires or All anything right. else. All right, go ahead and make uh, your perception check then, as you make your perception check for as you're down. Oh, buddy, that's a total of six. Oh, no. So as you, um, as you begin walking down the stairs and continue walking down the stairs... Um, you all, uh, um, you all seem to be, uh, you all seem to be pre doing pretty okay, Karma. Everything seems pretty much all right, as far as you can tell. Um, you walk down for about, you keep walking down these stairs down, down these stairs for about a good solid, um, probably about ten, probably about ten minutes, um, uh, before it eventually flattens out. Nothing really seems to happen as you're walking down. Um, it eventually flattens out into this long tunnel. It's about 60 feet long. Um, you begin walking You begin walking down it. Um, and as you are, uh, as you are, as you are consistent, as you are walking down it, um, Nothing seems to happen. Nothing seems to change. Eventually, after about five more minutes of walking, you come upon a small. Uh, the The hallway leads to a very sm leads to a door, um, set within, set set within the wall. Um, All right. Once I see that door directly in front of you. <clears throat> once I see that door, I want to go back towards everybody and be like, "Hey, uh, guys, uh, quiet. Just stay here. I'm gonna go check it out real quick." I'll be right back, okay? Okay, so you head and then the head, <clears throat> head to the door. Um, I'm gonna check for traps and then uh, peek through if I can. Check check if it's locked first, obviously. If not, whatever, then I'll open it up and take a peek through quietly, stealthily. Um, so let me know what I need to roll. All right. Um, so you check to see if it's locked. Um, it does not appear to be locked at all. It actually seems to be pretty. It seems to be open. You. Uh, I wanted to traps first, so if that's would have been my previous traps roll, that's fine. Just uh, let you know. Well, all right, so what was your traps roll? Uh, that is a. Oh, that's eighteen. All right. Uh, nothing really seems to catch your attention as you check it, but. Okay. No, um, as you slowly push open the door. Um, your dark vision allows you to glance inside, and you can see a room. Um, probably about 15 feet by probably about 12 feet. Um, a table sits squarely in the middle of the room. Um, Across the across the room, there is another doorway that you can see, um, and along the sides of the walls um, appear to be <coughs> appear to be mirrors, or appear to be these large, um, almost reflective type surfaces along the sides of the walls. It's 
about what okay. you can see from where you're at. All right, so I'll close the door quietly again, go back to the group. Um, in this time, could I do a an arcana check on Chow? Uh, I'm going to go with no, um, just because you are walking and it is pretty much pitch black at this point. Um, like, we, we stopped for Karma to go up ahead. I just wanted I'm to check. I'm still going to say no. Okay. Uh, so when I get back to the group, all right, guys. So there's a uh, there's a smallish room up there, probably about fifteen feet by twenty feet. Um, there's a table in the middle. I saw some maybe mirrors or re reflective surfaces of some sort on either side, uh, to the left and to the right. There's another door on the other side. Uh, remind me, uh, Salix, everybody else. What were the three types of creatures that were facing? That, that we know of chains chains which we've taken care of whips whips boards. and boards so I don't think this would necessarily be anything we might have to fight inside there maybe it maybe the reflective surfaces uh, maybe Clarissa would you know if those were possibly some type of portal which obviously Thrawn's not here so that'd be more towards um DM. I haven't uh I haven't encountered anything along those lines. Um so it's possible. I, I, I don't know the type of magic these guys use. They're they're different. All right. Well, I guess uh if anybody that doesn't have any any objections, I think best just to head through that room, maybe check it out while we're in there. Probably nothing inside there. I took a good look around, it didn't see anything. So, unless anybody has objections, let's uh, let's go check it out. All right. So I'll make my way forward. Uh, at this point, I'm going to pick the, the rope back up so that Salix has a good idea of where I am, what's going on. Uh, once I get back to the door again, I'm going to open it up again, kind of stealthily again, and take a good look around to the left and to the right, particularly not towards the door. I want to like check the corners, make sure that there's nothing inside that's going to surprise us. Okay. As you look off to the sides, you see a large dragon, and you all die. No, I'm kidding. Um, Excellent. Uh, no. You, uh, as you, as you glance off to the side, as you glance off to the sides, nothing really seems to catch your attention at all. Um, you all, uh, you all enter the room. Um, and it's just exactly as Carmen described. A large table in the middle of the room would appear to be um, uh, mirrors and different, uh, what appear to be different mirrors um, that are currently uh, on type, on type of, or on, on the sides of the room, um, on the walls of the room. And, uh, table is sprawled with different papers with different uh different things uh with different papers um some i uh, would different ink wells and um quills and different things along those lines um i would like to go up to the table and uh maybe investigate it for drawers with any type of clues or even just the papers on top i want to do a good thorough investigation on it just to see if there's anything of interest all right go ahead check okay there we go uh, 19 plus 6 so 25 as you uh, as you take a few minutes to shuffle through the papers um, you find that the ink wells are uh, and the ink bottles are currently um, uh, not filled with ink they are filled with um, what appears to be a red uh liquid um kind of thicker at this point kind of so a little as you move it around it's 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 it moves but it seems to kind of stain and takes a minute to slowly come back down to level you know, within the bottle um the papers themselves uh seem to be uh showing different alleys um 
uh, and different, uh, some of the papers seem to be showing different alleys and different, seems to be different maps of the city, um, and very specific area and very specific places where, uh, that ha very specific areas within the city. Um, they also appear to have, um, uh, some writing on it, uh, some writing, some writings on some of the papers talk, uh, seem to speak of um, when shipments were due, but they are very, very dated papers um, and don't seem to be of any use. Um, uh, um, you do manage to, you, as you're as you're searching through the papers, you do find the name of. Um, uh, you do f happen to find, stumble across a name of uh, an, of an individual that you have previously encountered as Dara, um, and the in, uh, it's, it says shipment from Dara received, um, and then it actually lists out the uh, lists out the individuals that were um, were shipped to shipped to um, shipped to Plona, from what you can tell. Um, Any names you recognize, like family names, maybe? None of the names you recognize, no. But they, it does give you a list of, does give you a list of like, and there's not like it gives you more of a list of just individual names. Doesn't like not first and last, just kind of first names is what you really notice. Um, um, it's a very simple table. There's no drawers or anything. Um, that's kind of what you get from the table. Okay. I will show um, Riven and Salix and anybody else that's interested the the sheet about Dara at, in particular. And Mural, as you're as you, as as you're helping uh, Karma, as you're helping Karma, um, and just kind of looking around, uh, you notice uh, a slight shadow in one of the mirrors um, that seems to kind of move, and. It, Darts, uh, you look, you glance up and look at it and make eye contact. It almost kind of seems to make it. It seems humanoid in shape, but it's very blurry and you can't exactly tell what it is. Its eye, uh, from what you can tell, where its eyes would be, they're a very dull, almost yellow color. You make eye contact with it and it dart as it for just but a moment, and then then it darts off to the side of one of the mirrors um, and vanishes from your sight. I distinctively unsheath my weapon about three quarters of the way. It's really awkward, but okay. Enough that I can still push it back or pull it out fully. We're not alone. There's something here. Uh, daggers are out at that point. Uh, I'm gonna stow the the piece of parchment that has to do with Dara in my pack and daggers out. Okay. Well, let's get out of this room, then, guys. I have I have the feeling I I don't know anything about magic, but I have the feeling that those mirrors lead to this room. Let's get out of here. Um, I'm gonna go forward then and check the door ahead of us for traps, and then head head on through. All right. Um, go ahead and make your investigation roll real quick. Investigation or perception? Investigation, since you are actively trying to, like, inspect and look at the door. Okay. I'm keeping it Natural out for that thing. All right. It is a door. Does not seem trapped. Uh, you get the feeling that if anyone ever made it to this room, uh, no one was really expected to make it to this room. Um, it was supposed to be pretty much like if you made it here, <clears> you <throat> were um, dead. either dead or you were part of the uh, inner circle that was supposed to make it to this room. Um, as you go through the door and open it up, uh, you find yourself at the bottom of a very long staircase, and as you continue, as you begin walking up, you continue for almost about an hour, um, before a small bead of light comes peering down, um, from the top, and you all end up rushing towards it uh for some of you this is the first time seeing uh it, it's the nice scent it's a nice of light you eventually reach the end and you find yourself um find yourself at a door with a very small hole 
um, or very small, like kind of like window opening in, in it. Um, and you look out and you can see, um, uh, you can see uh, just across the way, you can see uh, the broken down building and warehouse um, of the Maple Cloud um, warehouse that you entered from. You exit out back into the back into the main thoroughfare, um, and you see uh, uh, sen you see, sen you see Sensen and a few of his a uh, few other armed individuals currently standing around the Maple Cloud warehouse, looking at all, uh, looking down the giant hole, seemingly oblivious um, as you, the rest of you, as all of you, kind of file out <laughs> of this um, uh, <coughs> secondary. Uh, door from behind. Is there any sign of Sensen and his reinforcements? Yeah, he's they're all at the uh they're all at the Maple Cloud warehouse that is currently across from the way from you guys at this point in time. Um they're currently peering down the hole. They're currently kind of quarantined the area off at this point. Um but you see a very large activity of uh storm blades currently um currently, like, kind of making sure that nothing else, going over that entire area with a very fine tooth comb. Sensen! You're about 400, you're probably about probably about 300 feet away from the edge of where uh, the barricade is at this point. Okay, I'll, I'll say that you eventually make your way over to there. You find Sensen within the matter of a few, within the matter of a few minutes. Um, and he looks over you and says, "Oh, oh, good! You're you're all alive. What happened down there? <sighs> we got here as quickly as we could, but uh, by the time we got here, you were nowhere to be found." Um, Have well. you blocked off the warehouse? Well, obviously, and he kind of gestures to all the storm blades that are currently putting up rope and everything around the warehouse at this point. I'll uh, I'll leave my compatriots to tell you about what happened. Can I borrow a few of your a few a few extra guards to show them where we came out? Oh, by all means, go. F yes, please. Okay, and then I want to take them back to the exit that we came out of while everyone else talks to Benson. I'll say that over the next like probably half hour to an hour, you guys tell Sensen of what transpired um, down below, um, what happened, and uh, it is um, there that we will end this evening as you make your way back to where you guys head to. I guess we don't know. We still got um, Shao in our care. Um, we have Shao. We also have a parent bill that's coming out of... Uh, Last place we were staying was heading to the Brass Tiger, I think it was. Are you guys head to Brass Tiger? You, uh... I mean, I love to... Brass Tiger. Should we take her? Should we take uh, Shout to the Dragon's Head? <clears throat> Brass Tiger? Okay. Brass Tiger? Okay. Before we go, can, we, can I ask Sensen to have the great hands very carefully? Uh, investigate and deal with the skin pit at the bottom of the Maple Cloud warehouse? Uh, well, when they arrive, I'll suggest it to them, but I have no direct authority over them, but I'll okay. suggest that they look into it. Warn them to not touch the walls. We'll, we'll do. We can make sure that that, that, that is told to them. Um, you all eventually make your way back to the Brass Tiger. Um... There that will end tonight's session. That was intense. Good shit tonight, guys. Indeed. Um. All right. Well, I'm going to head off and uh, rock back and forth nervously in a corner <laughs> with a bottle of whiskey. So I will uh, <laughs> talk like to you guys spirit? tomorrow. Like I would like experience. Totals. I'll I'll hang on for that. I'll hang on like for experience totals. totals. I, I would. It's been it's been a while. It's been quite some time. It's been a while. It's it's been a few weeks. 
without experience. Such as well, no, we've gotten it. It just hasn't been given to us numerically. All right, hit me with it. Like the very first time. It was fun, guys. Yeah, it was good stuff. And I was at six. Indeed. <laughs> All right, so it's a grand total of. For everybody, it is a grand total of 1,666 experience points. For the total for the for defeating Roxarian this evening. Um, oh boy. As well as. I always lose this freaking thing, Jake. I think it. What are you guys at? Seven? Yeah, yeah. we're at seven. Okay. We're well away from eight. Oh, indeed. Yeah, I mean, we just hit seven, what? Four sessions ago? Yeah. About? Yeah. Right. Salix and. Salix, you gain an additional 525. <sighs> You gain an additional three fifty. Riven gains an additional seven hundred. All right, so that was just enough to get me to level twenty. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and level up to there for next week. Ha! Uh. Uh. <laughs> Remember that dragon? He came back. <laughs> <laughs> it's alive and well. Shit. Mural, that's an additional 350. Uh, Tyrion. Additional 875. Oh my. And then Clarissa gets an additional... Uh, 525 as well. From the hash marks that we did that you guys earned throughout all of that. Hash marks? I do a ha I'm doing I do Matt Mercer's hash mark system. Um, so like if you do something really really awesome, I'll give you like hash mark. Ha I'll give you like ha I'll be like oh yeah that's a hash mark, and then I like it's 25 times your level times the number of hash marks that you guys get. Oh, that's like the bonus thing? Okay. That's the bonuses, yeah. And like for for like the how do you want to do this? It's normally like three it's like normally three hash marks easily. It's like a easy, it's like just automatically three hash marks that I normally do. I liked my how did you want to do this tonight? That was really good. I I enjoyed that. I hope you I'm, all enjoyed that too. I'm I'm tired. That was a yeah, that, that was, was intense. Like, that was a combat intensive session. Like, and granted, like that was most of the, that was, like that combat lasted two weeks. Like that was, holy crap. I mean, honestly, had we started like, that would have been a full session. Yeah. Full eight to we eleven start, session. I was about to say we only started. We started half late half. two weeks we in started, a row. We only started half an hour late this week, and the week beforehand we only started at we started. But, at, no, but right, but what I'm saying going. is, like, if we had started that fight at, yeah. you know, normal time, 8 o'clock session, no delays, whatever, everyone's here, Yeah, that would have been a that full session, session just yeah. for the fight. Yeah, Just for the fight. That is not a complaint. No. That was intense and awesome and dynamic and weird, and I was a snake. You were a snake. So, I was a snake. I thought I did very well as a snake. Uh, I was not prepared to be a snake in any way, shape, or form. I had, like, some thoughts about what I might want to do uh, this session. Uh, snake was, yeah, did not even. 
enter into outer orbit of my considerations. <laughs> gotta, so well played there, sir. Gotta love well that played. wild magic. Gotta love that wild I magic. I love it. Stuff, like I, that's a that's a baller DM curveball right there. I get. Hey, uh, wild magic throws a lot into it, and you've still got that. Sword I love it. Well. No, it's not you've a complaint. You still got that sword as well that you can uh, that you have not yet to try yet either i have i have yet to try it i've been filled with uh unholy rage holy rage with holy rage yeah <laughs> i hope you guys liked uh, that encounter i hope you guys liked that encounter i that did one. that was that great one. we had lava traps and chains and I snakes i fucked that guy up <laughs> he fucked you up he fucked me up aren't you I like terrified up. of that guy talking a lot of shit for someone who doesn't want to do that again I think that was Swagga, not Mural. I know, I know. I was playing off the dichotomy. I don't notice things, and I can't listen. I'm kidding. It's okay. I think we're I all. It, I make it sound off. like I have social anxiety and social problems. I don't. <laughs> I just make it sound like it. That's exactly what someone with social anxiety would say. Okay, I might have some social anxiety. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'm it's tired. okay, man. We love you. Uh, we're all tired. That was a, I, I'm going to bed as soon as we're really, off the call. That was so. a ridiculous yeah. session. Holy crap. I, I think Riven had some... I think... I, I, I like playing with Riven's like attacks and how he does his unarmor attacks. Those are those are more fun. To, those are a lot of fun to play with. How many attacks can I get? When Riven decides to just let loose, he just absolutely destroys, and it's kind of disgusting. You guys and were. Amazing. It's kind of how guys, I, I'm gonna call it a night, but that was a great session. I will talk to you later. That was hilarious. It was great. You guys were um, you were dealing a pretty much like anytime you guys were doing like piercing or bludgeoning damage, it was pretty much halved. Just due to his resistances, it was he had even two, even two. mine because my m magic is supposed to overcome resistances to bludgeoning. The, ma the magical ones, yeah, were no, those were fine. But okay, the uh, the, uh, the um the the thing the, yeah. the 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 piercing the piercing the bludgeoning and then when fire kicked in, um, due to Clarissa and Karma, hey. uh, he actually regained health due to that. Oh. Um, uh, he started, I my think, staff we're... does fire damage, FYI. That what changed it? My staff does a little bit of fire damage. You need to make sure, make sure you're telling me that type of stuff, too. Because okay. I'm going to be... I'm going to start being a little more stricter with a lot of, with some of this stuff. Um, just because some of these battles... Some of these battles will be a little bit more intense. So just making okay. sure you're explaining to me... Like saying, okay, this is piercing, this is fire is helpful. Um, and they'll help okay. me make sure that I'm not screwing up things. Because I'm getting the feeling that some rolls and some spells are not being used correctly and are not being used and are and are being used to circumvent um the rules almost to an extent um so i am i'm, I'm trying to clamp down on that and be like if this is not what it says and this is not how this works then unfortunately that's not how it's going to go that's why i'm t taking time to look up spells and other, that makes sense. That's why I try other, to ask other questions. Other attacks. Assume something. Right. Other attacks. Like, as well. like so. In my mind, the reason why I asked the question about Thunder Wave was that yeah. if the sphere was stuck in him, my thought process was, well, it's basically a Thunder Wave explosion out from it. Can I, like, burn some extra damage off of him by having you, it come from you inside probably, of him? You probably could have if you wanted to. Yeah, but I didn't like the way it's worded. It says it comes from me, but since right. I don't actually technically, have that spell, it's like technically, technically, like, yeah. technically it's from the spear. Technically, it's from wherever you impact the spear. Normally, the, in okay. the impact is like where. Normally, the impact is like on your square. But since like you were so embedded, in, like the spear was embedded in him, you could have probably got a little extra damage on top of that. So, but I, the only reason why I didn't do it is because I checked my my fifteen foot radius, and half of my team, if they failed yeah. the knockback, would have landed in the lava pit. <laughs> so. Yeah. That was the one reason I didn't do that. Yeah. Um, but for the most part... Was, uh, here's another fun. question I did want to bring up. Why is it that when it grapples us, we don't get to check it? Like, dodge out of the that way? Was, that or... was the room that was grappling you. That wasn't the... That wasn't him. If I, if he attempt, if he attempted to grapple you, that was a... Um, that was a your athletics versus his strength check. Um... If it was the room grappling you, it was an automatic grapple. It's just, it was just part of this encounter. Like, it's not something okay. that happens every time. Um, but, like, that was... 
if, if you were if you were noticing it was his grab like when he ever he grappled it was his athletics versus your acrobatics or your athletics or something like that so okay uh, that was how that was working tonight it's not how it'll work every time in the future but just due to the circumstances of this encounter that was how that worked and how that happened okay because i just i just I didn't want to bring it up like, in game, but I was being like, "That seems weird." That no, Salix even Salix even brought it against it. Like, no, yeah. even brought it up as well in game, and that I, I I said that originally. Like, I was like, "It's just part of the encounter. That's how this room is set up." Is it's like you understand? Like, this room was basically just covered in chains, more chains than honestly I could have even put on the map. Um, yeah, like this room was just like I just put enough chains just so you could understand like that there were a lot of chains around this room and there were like very specific areas you would have had to step in in order to avoid those why do you um, think I picked that hole behind him to stand like, no which <laughs> um, I'm also yeah. testing our team a little bit here yeah um, I wasn't gonna go in until I saw some other people engaging on him was, because yeah, more good. than once I'm the only one engaging a boss and everybody's yeah. one shotting little ads around him Yep. I was, what was it, three rounds at least? Mm-hmm. One yeah. to one on him? Yeah, welcome to my world, buddy. <laughs> I am I not me. a tank. Riven is not, he's turning into a tank, but he's not built, he's not RP'd as a tank. He's mm-hmm. RP'd as a mobile get in, do some damage, get out type of character. Yep. And, I mean, this room does not work well for that stance, but mm-hmm. more than once, I'm forcing Riven to play out of character to be on the boss because nobody else is. Yeah. That works. So. Um, okay. All right, guys. That's not something I've talked to anybody else about either. Everyone on Twitch who's been watching, thank you for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, I appreciate you guys as well for checking out our streams and our crazy crazy stories that we get into. Um, tonight was a lot of combat, so thanks for sticking with us for that. Um, let's go find somebody to host up. I'm I'm tired. I've had a long day, and I've got class tomorrow. And I don't want to go to class. I really don't want to go to class. I need to.